Hi, good evening, everybody, and a big welcome to all of you in our grand revision session today. This is Hassan Bosani, and uh, today is a big day. It is just two, three days left for the exam, and today we will try to just wrap up, just revise the important topics and uh, do some extra things. So. There are three broad things we will be covering today. Okay, the first one will be, uh, we will try and talk about the top 25 important topics. I will quickly, or we will quickly revise the topics. It's very important, right, that you are uh, familiar with the topic, okay? After that, we will go through all the case studies we have done uh, during the last uh, three weeks. And we will try to memorize or recall what were the main points for each and every question. And in the last leg of tonight, um, we will like talk about exam techniques, technical articles, and I will take uh, a lot of questions. Okay. Right. So uh, let me in just a second. There's some water here. Let me. Oops, there are so much water here. Wait, wait a second, guys. Okay, so let me share my screen. Arsalan, I don't know. It will, I don't know, honestly. It might take. Um, Okay, so we will we will start with this one. Okay, our top uh, quick revision handout ultra summarized notes. I hope everybody has it. Please, can you all open up a Microsoft Word document on your machines? Open up a blank Word document because today I will, you will be typing on your Word document, right? So please open up a Word document. All right, so uh, that's a brief introduction. More, most of you are aware of me by now. This is a list of important models. So there are 10 important models which you must be familiar with, okay? And we will just touch upon each of them one by one. Is your Microsoft Word document ready? Microsoft Word document should be ready, all of you. If you really want to make the most of today's session, then you must be ready with your Microsoft Word. All right, so the first topic is external environment, okay? And there are two types of external environment. One is called country environment and the other one is called industry environment. The country environment has many names. It is also called macro environment. It is also called general environment and the model which we use is pestle. The industry environment is also has many names. It is known as micro environment. It is also known as industry environment or marketplace environment. It is also known as competitive environment and the model we use is Potify. So I have a question. If the question says, analyze the general environment, which model will you use? Please type. Who said both? Someone said both. Very bad. If the, I repeat the question, if the question says analyze the analyze the general environment, then you can't have both, right? It is simply general environment is another name for country environment, and you will use pestle. 
these guys do not make these silly mistakes on the last day okay if the question says analyze the external environment then which model someone said porter 5 both yes both is correct if it says analyze the external environment, external environment includes both pestle and porter. But if it says analyze general environment, then we will just use pestle. If it says analyze industry environment or competitive environment, we will just use porter five. But if it says external environment, we will use both models as much as possible. It also depends with how much information is provided. Am I clear, guys? This is the first fundamental where the examiner plays with you. You have to be very clear. The moment you show a weakness here, you will lose marks. Now, PESTEL, please type on your Word document, what does PESTEL stand for? Time starts now. Please type on your Word document what is the thing for PESTEL. Just trying to use. Okay, clear? Please type on your Word document. Very good. So, PESTEL is political, economy, social, technological, ecological, and legal. So, political, as we all know now, uh, hang on, I'm just setting my screen. Yeah. Uh, it talks about government government policies, government subsidies, government approval or license, political situation of the country, even taxes. Anything to do with government comes under political. Economy, it talks about economy, economic growth, economic downturn, recession, in, in, in inflation, all those things, they are also part of economy. Social will talk about prosperous developed nations, standard of living, population, unemployment. All these are social aspects. Technology will talk about machineries, skilled workers, IT, internet, roads and infrastructure. All these are club under technological. Ecological will talk about earth, right? So CO2, emission, carbons, recycling, pollution, all those things. And legal will talk about all the laws and regulations. So words like laws, regulations, legislations. This one is very important. Patent, trademark, copyrights, they are all part of legal. Okay, now the very important thing is that you need to mention favorable or unfavorable very clearly in your answer, whether the factor is favorable for our business or unfavorable for our business and the impact, why do you say it's favorable or why do you say it's unfavorable, you have to give some logic, some justification, that's the impact and the third thing is overlapping points, so in pastel, one point can fit into multiple places, like uh, it can fit into political as well as it can fit into legal. So there is a overlapping margin, so it's allowed. So just your argument or impact might be different. Please, Arsalan, I don't want you to ask questions, such basic questions, because you have joined very late, right? So those of you who has just joined in last week, 
this this is not a detailed session okay you have access to the recordings you can go through it but i don't want you to ask so basic questions that i have to stop everything and go into the details this is not a detailed session so those of you who have joined very late it is not a session for you you just listen and grab okay <sighs> OTA 5 forces, as we know, is a model we use for industry or micro environment. Please, can you write the five factors? Type on your Word document the five yes. factors which are used. Anu, what are you doing? Please type the five factors on your Word document. Time starts now. Done. Very good. What are the quarter five forces? All of you have typed on your word document. Okay. Right. So the first one is power of custom bargaining power of customer bargaining power of supplier threat of new entrance threat of competition and threat of substitute product bargaining power of customer we have to assess whether uh, the customer bargaining power is high or low okay we have to assess how can you assess there are certain factors like you can look at the size of the customer you can look at any if you have any brand or uniqueness in our product is the customer willing to pay any premium these are the things based on which you can decide who has the upper hand whether the customer has upper hand or you have upper hand for example you versus acca you are accs customers right they earn revenue from you who has an upper hand, you or ACC? Right, obviously, right? So from their point of view, customer bargaining power is high or low. From ACCA's point of view, the customer bargaining power of their customers or student is high or low? Low, right? Very good. Similarly, power of supplier. In this, we look at the bargaining power of our suppliers. Now, so who are suppliers? Suppliers are people from whom we buy raw materials. Obviously, we want the bargaining power of supplier to be high or low. What do you think? As a company, we want the bargaining power of our suppliers to be high or low? No. Yes. I want my power to be high, his power to be low, so that I can screw him. I can negotiate, I can get discounts, I can get credit if I have strong bargaining power. Very good. Again, size of supplier, are we willing to pay any premium? Are there other suppliers in the markets? All these factors will help you decide. Threat of new entrants, we basically look for barriers to entry. Okay. Are there any barriers? If there are any barriers, if the barrier is high, then threat is low. That is opposite relationship. So if any strong barrier is present, then the threat of new entrant is obviously low, right? What are the examples of various examples of barriers? most commonly used in your exam is patents government approvals or government licenses franchise all these are very good examples of barriers and if any of these is present in your scenario then the threat of new entrant is no threat 
threat of competition obviously uh, all case study will uh, will provide you information about the level of competition so far i have always seen that in your exams the level of competition is always intense or high so the keywords is competition market share all these you know are factors through which you can assess whether the competition is high or low and then there is threat of substitute products you will look for words like substitute and alternatives based on that you need to assess whether the threat of substitute is high or low the main thing is for each factor you have to mention whether it is high or low and then you have to give your logic your justification why you are saying it's high or low okay okay in your exams supposing information is only available for three factors or four factors out of five it is also possible right that you may not find information about all the factors sometimes it happens that one of the factors like alt substitute product nothing is mentioned or nothing is mentioned at the, uh, about the supplier it's okay then you just talk about the three factors which is available and leave the rest okay guys are we very clear on pestle and porter five are you guys very clear on pestel there are six factors in pestel pestel is used for wider country environment or general environment and uh, there are five factors in porter five porter five is used for industry environment uh, yes laiba what are you saying today are you think you are not in the right frame of mind Who's shouting? Excuse me. Okay. Impact, justifications, everything is there. Okay. All right. The last thing is something called strategic position analysis. strategic position analysis remember this word huh? uh, whenever the question says analyze the strategic position of abc company then always you have to cover these three things a strategic position includes three things remember huh? strategic position includes three things you may need to talk about the country environment obviously which model pastel model you will need to talk about the micro industry environment which model four to five model and then in addition to these two you will also need to talk about internal environment or internal factors which we know what are the internal factors human resource financial resource it and brand so these three components one two and three together they are known as strategic position obviously it is a very lengthy question because you have to do a pastel you have to do a port of five and then you have to do internal factors so at least at least a question which uh, which asks you about analyzing the strategic position will at least be 15 or 18 marks should be otherwise you know uh, eight marks 10 marks then you are misunderstanding the requirement it's something else it cannot be less than 15 marks because there are two or three models right any questions on this porter diamond no please please stay away from did i mention porter diamond anywhere it's not even on my list okay i think these are the new guys who are just joined today or they have never joined and just they just today was the grand revisions and they just thought of attending a class today and now they you are asking these questions which have always always been you know clarified so long this is doing yes smile this is so annoying 
I think I made a mistake by inviting these people. If you are a new joiner or you have not attended classes, please, this is a revision session. Do not share your thoughts here. You're confusing everybody, okay? Just be a silent audience. Or you can leave if you want, up to you. Guys, clear? Okay. So, pastel, porter, and strategic position. These are the three topics. If the question says, analyze the comp advantage, we did that yesterday, Buzula. It's internal. Yeah, competitive advantage is internal. Okay. Good. Now, the next topic is SFA framework. What does SFA stand for? Uh, suitability, feasibility, and acceptability. The first thing you need to understand is when do we use this model? We, in the exam, you will use this model when we plan to acquire another company. So this is the key word, acquisition or acquire. Whenever in your exam, a question comes about acquisition, that the company is thinking of acquiring some other company, then only you will apply SFA, acquisition, right? If the question does not talk about acquisition, stay away from SFA, from exam point of view. It's a very lengthy model. And of course, the marks should also be uh, um, at least 15 marks for SFA, right? It's a very lengthy model. If it's anything less than 15 marks, it's something wrong. No, Bilal. Okay, so suitability talks about external factors. There are three paragraphs under suitability. You will talk about home country, you will talk about target country, and then you will talk about target company. Both of these, uh, all these three are external thing. Home country is an external environment, target country is external, and the target company which we are planning to acquire is external, right? Feasibility talks about internal factors. And there are three paragraphs again. The first, you will talk about human resource and expertise. That whether do we have acquisition experience from the past? Do we have experience of managing the businesses? Do we have experience of working in overseas countries, if applicable? All these aspects is human resource. Financial resource. Do we have funds to acquire the company? You look at the gearing ratios. And the third paragraph is technology and brand under acceptability you look at the financials of the target company okay of the target company so there are again three paragraphs will the shareholders shareholders acceptance cultural differences and the financial projections of the target company is that clear so sfa has suitability, feasibility, acceptability. And within these three, there are three paragraphs each. Please, on your Word document, can you please type SFA? Then you type suitability. What are the three things? Feasibility. What are the three things? Acceptability. What are the three things? Please type. I'm waiting. Once you are done, please type that. Yes, Ananya. Uh, sir, I have a question. In acceptability, in acceptability, can you please explain, you know, like if it is a uh, family-owned business. Can you please type we... first? Sure. Okay, sir.
Yeah, once you're done, please type done. There will be nine headings, three broad, three main headings. And within the three main headings, there will be three subheadings. So total nine subheadings. Arsalan, please. Okay. <laughs> uh, you cannot beat her. I will lower her. Okay, done. All right. So Ananya asked how, if it's a listed company, how we will uh, do the shareholder acceptance. So if it's a family company, family owned or a private company, it is automatically acceptable because the board of directors are the family members, right? So if the board of directors are proposing the acquisition deal, automatically they will approve as shareholders as well because they are one and the same persons, okay? In a family business or a private company, the owners and the directors are almost same. But if it's a listed company, in a listed company, the shareholders will be different and the board of directors will be different. So then the shareholders will accept if it has a positive or a NPV or a reasonable NPV. So you will be given financial projections. If there is a positive NPV, uh, then why not? Then you will say that it will. it's possible that the shareholders will approve because the proposal has a positive NPV of $3 million or X, Y, Z. Okay. We are on you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Is the confusion required? Many students, they ask that after our answer of SFA, do we need to conclude? My simple answer is avoid conclusions if the question does not specifically ask for conclusions, okay? Do not offer, be generous, do not be generous. Do not offer your conclusion unnecessarily unless the question says yes, Sana. Sir, I just want to uh, get it clear that uh, what, will, uh, what will be the difference in para one and para three like uh, while reviewing the financial projections, uh, maybe Malab, uh, I am feeling that uh, it will be almost same para one and para three material, is it? There is a big difference there between para one and para three. Para three is all about projections. You will be challenging the projections, right? Remember, we've done many questions on projections. Like five, five factors we have to check that will be yes. uh, included here. Para three, yes. Okay. And then uh, what will be in para one? Para one, you will just say whether the shareholders will accept or not. What will be your assessment? Like whether this project is beneficial or not for the share, uh, will this they, acquisition. Will they approve or not? Okay. Okay. That's okay. it. It's a, it's a subjective para. And whereas para three is all calculations. Actual and based. Yes. Okay. All right, now sometimes your SFA may get complicated, sometimes, okay? Uh, if you feel that you don't want to use SFA model, it's okay. It is not compulsory to use any model in SBL anyways, you know this by now. So if you don't want to use SFA, then you can use a general approach to analyze whether we should acquire the company or not but give some broad headings. You can give first heading could be external factors, internal factors, and financials. These are the three broad headings under which you can cover your answer without using SFA. Next, you can talk about external factors. You can talk about internal factors and the third heading would be financials, okay? And I've also mentioned here that, you know, if you feel that there's a problem, you're struggling with SFA, please watch these webinars for practice. Okay. All right.
What's a crow? Yeah, it's a it's a crow. Oh, <laughs> it's a typing error. Okay, now next topic is SWOT. SWOT. Most of us know SWOT, right? SWOT stands for strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat. Strengths and weaknesses are internal. Opportunities and threats are external. Guys, can you please stop chatting with each other? Can you focus on the main thing rather than chats? Now SWOT, after SWOT, there's something called TOES matrix. So TOES matrix is a outcome or a, it's attached with SWOT. What is a TOES matrix? It is a four box on the X axis, you will have strength, weakness, opportunities and threats, okay? So this box is SO, like S from here and Y O from here, okay? SO means use your strength to grab opportunities. WO means remove your weakness to avail opportunities. ST means use your strengths to avoid threats. And WT means remove your weakness to avoid threats, okay? Uh, so far, uh, SWOT and TOES have not been tested. Maybe SWOT once, but TOES has never come. But I just thought I will share TOES because it is a model attached with SWOT. Yes, Usman, you're right. So, uh, TOES has not been tested. So, if the exam, if they ask you to analyze a SWOT and suggest options, then you may use TOES. Otherwise, no need to use models as well. Uh, based on SWOT, you can suggest some strategies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Corporate parenting is another topic which has never been tested so far. So I will just give you a very quick overview so that if it comes, which is very unlikely that at least you know what to do. So corporate parenting means it talks about a group of companies like there's a head office and then it has got so many subsidiaries. Okay. So I know for a fact in India, there's Tata group. It's a group. It's so many businesses under that group. So you will see in real life, multinationals are like that. In real life, you will see that, uh, you know, yes, uh, there are groups which have so many businesses under them. They own stakes in so many businesses. So corporate parenting is no, Umar, after two hours. You can, you can go for a break. Uh, corporate parenting is that there's a group, a parent or a head office, and it has got many childs. And do you guys think that the head office, they will be monitoring the performance of each subsidiary? Yes or no? Obviously, right? That's the job of the head office. That's the job of the parent that all the investments he has made in its subsidiaries, they will definitely be monitoring the performance. Which subsidiary is performing extremely good? Which one is just average? Which one is really bad? Should we divest? Should we invest more? Should we just let it continue? All this is based on analysis. So in an exam, a possible question can be that analyze the performance of your subsidiaries. So for, for example, a three data about three subsidiaries or four subsidiaries might be given to you and you will be asked to analyze the relative performance of the subsidiaries. So whenever you get a question like a group accounts or uh, there's a head office and they want to analyze the performance of their sub, here are the five things you can analyze. For each subsidiary, you can look at the five things. 
industry growth that whatever industry the sub is in sub means subsidiary is that industry in growth phase or is that industry mature or is that industry in decline phase that's the first thing then you look at the market share percentage of your sub the so market share is basically the revenue of your the turnover of your sub divide by the industry turnover so it tells us how much uh, share our subsidiary has we look at the market share trend whether the markets our market share is increasing or maintained or declining okay we look at the profit margins of our sub whether the profit margin like gp margin or np margin is uh, constant increasing or declining then you, you then you can also do a bcg assessment which is like um, it's a small model in which you you decide whether it's a star company or a cash cow or a dog or a question mark all right and what is this so you can watch this webinar for more details it's all right and then you can lastly talk about strength and weaknesses of the sub so just remember these five things and for more details please you can watch this but i would not suggest that you spend time on non important topics in the last three days so you can just avoid, you know choose to ignore yes ananya so can you please explain the market share point again can you please watch this video because i don't want to spend time on non important topics oh okay hmm? yeah That's good. now there is a possible model called ansof again um you must just know about these terminologies uh, no need for models so every company wants to grow right every company wants to grow they want to increase their revenue so there are four ways of increasing revenue it's a growth model you see ansof uh growth model there are four ways to go grow either you grow through your existing business like existing products existing markets you just improve the quality of the product you improve the marketing of your products you improve the after sales services of your product just the usual things to increase your market share that's called penetration another way to increase is called product development that if you want to increase revenue you can develop or add new products to your portfolio so if i'm just teaching sbl i will start teaching a triple a that's another product so that's a product development obviously my total income will increase the other option is market development that if i am just selling in pakistan or just i'm just selling in india you add more markets so if you are just selling in mumbai start having a branch in delhi if you are already in north india you can start selling in south india open up branches in south india if you are across all india then try to move into other parts of the world geographical expansions and diversification is you you know add new businesses like completely different product completely different markets so all these are ways through which companies they want more and more they can increase their revenue so there are four options penetration product development market development and diversification you must just know what these words mean and i'm sure you are able to guess what they mean right okay again this has not been tested so far harmon's process strategy matrix also not been tested so far in the last two two and a half years um i would want to skip that because i really don't expect a question on this one you can 
if you want you can watch this uh, webinar although i would not suggest that you spend time on less important topics afiza you are right uh, but i don't want to complicate things right now Mendelo stakeholder this one was important this has been tested in your exam and i think when when did we do a question on stakeholder which question was that can anybody remind me i think we recently oh yesterday we did oh yeah yesterday we did a question on this nccp right stakeholders matrix that you know organizations they can divide their stakeholders into four groups okay key players key player oh, sorry guys key player keep satisfied keep informed and minimum effort please guys open up your word documents please type what are the most common example under key players who normally comes under key player please give the heading key player and give two examples time starts now yeah, got it now please type under who comes under keep satisfied time starts now okay who comes under this box keep informed type now who comes here nobody actually uh you can say minority shareholders whatever where will trade union go trade union can go either in keep informed or keep satisfied generally it depends how powerful they are very good generally i would prefer most most stakeholders falls under this box keep informed very few in key players very few in keep satisfied majority stakeholders are keep informed and some of the very very smaller ones non important ones uh, goes under minimum effort like in yesterday's case uh, the board of trustees was key players right um keep, keep satisfied was the council um and customers beneficiaries or keep informed was beneficiaries employees volunteers and community okay nice so you see now we, when we do a question uh it suddenly becomes easy right pressure groups daniel again it's subjective pressure group generally is minimum effort because you know we don't give a shit otherwise keep informed is also good just be very very careful about these two just be very careful about these two here the low the only few very few stakeholders qualifies to be classified here majority is here or minimum effort okay suppliers keep informed yeah as i told you majority will be here am i clear now everybody
deeper type on the word document okay because so i want you to use that document there. let me clean all this all clean okay guys so bendelo is done culture the culture has been tested once or twice okay a very complicated topic a very tricky topic institutional investors if they are major investors then keep satisfied or keep layers if they are major investors if they are minor then keep informed a visa chances of culture yes the chances are there i cannot rule it out like other models right culture but it's very simple guys can you please now uh, stop chatting because i'm getting distracted culture what is the meaning of culture culture means the the working the existing environment of the organization so it is also known as organizational culture please guys can you stop messaging chatting for a few minutes while i'm doing this topic why don't you guys understand plain and simple english culture means the organizational culture what is the environment and culture varies from organization to organization if you if you have got a chance to work in several companies you will know what i mean that all companies have its own vibe own working environment own norms right so culture means the norms the value the routine that's the way things are done here all those things okay do you think a customer can also feel the organizational culture what do you think can customers also feel like employees will definitely feel the culture because we are working there but i'm sure customers can also feel what kind of company it is what kind of environment it is for example if you go if you go to a government bank if you enter into a government bank you will definitely feel nobody gives a shit about you there's no concept of customer service customer satisfaction laid back but if you go into a private bank or a very renowned bank and you will suddenly feel that the environment is very good the staff is very good they are talking to you nicely they are trying to help you definitely so culture is something which is intangible yeah intangible but you can actually feel it if, if employees can feel it then customers can feel it so it's a very important part of any organization now why does the culture vary from organization to organization that's the main question why isn't it constant throughout so there are certain factors of culture yes main factor is the leader so it's called power structure in the power structure we study the leader of the organization so the culture always comes from the leader whatever his views whatever his beliefs whatever his values that will come down that will trickle down across the organization right so if you want to study the culture of any organization the first thing is we look at the leader yes told from the top very good now a uh, family owned organization the board so when we say about leader uh, in a in a company 
it is actually the board because board is the top management right the ceo the chairman the directors so collectively they are the joint leadership of the organization so in a private company if it's a family owned maybe one or two persons will be very dominating but in a listed company it is the board the overall the values of the board which then trickles down okay so power structure talks about the leader organizational structure talks about the the hierarchy the organizational chart the structure of the board how many executive directors how many non executive directors are there board committees all these are part of the structure right is it a one man show is the chairman and ceo same person or not all these are things leading to the structure okay that will also give you an idea uh, what's happening at the top control systems you basically see whether the organization is cost focused or quality focused okay some organizations are really cost focused and some organizations are quality focused so this this approach actually determines their behavior that way of thinking their decision making okay this also so if an organization is really focused on quality the culture will be very different it will be very customer focused customer oriented culture but if a cult, if an organization is cost focused then they don't really give a shit about customers right uh, they are more focused on the costs ritual and routines it talks about the daily routine in the organization like uh, office timings working hours punctuality strictness leaves etc all these are part of rituals and routines symbols is basically show off status symbols what are the example like staff titles cars lavish benefits huge offices club membership symbols of power so you know what are is the organization showing off uh, is the leader show show showing off so all these things are symbols and stories uh previous history of the organization does the stories just don't bother about it from an exam point of view i think this one is very important you must know this one is important this much is important okay and little bit you can cover this one the rest might be a little bit difficult for you to talk about in the exam data is generally straightforward and identifiable on these four things there there is a question on this one uh if you want you can watch that guys can you give me a second i need to quiet the chat okay sorry guys so any questions on culture <laughs> this time it was a cat not a cow not a crow all right so let's admit that culture is a subjective topic huh just memorize these little bit of things try to get out of it rather than getting stuck into it if you want you can check out this question for to get an idea yes shake can i help you shake you are unmuted okay all right guys 
the context of change model this is another model this has also been tested once you remember which question i think we did this question in one of the scenario case studies we did two weeks back pt for you yes in the question pt for you we did this question myo bed approach <laughs> very good vakas yes so i will not spend a lot of time but context of change model is very simple when you are bringing any change in the organization if you are a leader if you are a ceo and you plan to implement or introduce something new then you have to plan that change very meticulously right so for example in tt for you case study the ceo wanted to implement or adopt a new approach called myo bed approach whatever that means or i love you approach or i don't give a shit approach whatever is the name and she was asking that you know please help me implement this it's a new thing i want to implement it across the company so these are the steps of change management when even in my company when we implement when we as management we decide to bring something new uh, for example uh, uh, last month we actually changed the entire commission structure of our sales staff okay i mean to insurance and insurance business depends on agents and agents they work on commissions so commission is a big thing a big expense in our company and it's a big motivator for the agents they really look forward to commissions that's what drives them so we made a base we made some major changes in the commission model now how can we roll it out how can we announce it it's not that simple because it will face resistance people might not understand they might have questions they might not like it so then before finalizing before implementing we followed this checklist of change management so now first thing is we look at the scope of the change scope of the change means size of the change is it a small change or a significant change it is a universal formula that small change is easy to implement large or significant change is difficult the larger the change the more difficult it gets right smaller the change the easier so first we have to decide whether this is a small change or a significant change if it is a small change it is called realignment under this model and if it's a big, big change it is called transformation that's the first thing we need to decide the second thing we need to know is the reason why the f we are bringing the change because you know uh, people don't like change unless there is a very strong valid reason nobody brings change just for the heck of it so the reason has to be very very clear the justifications has to be clear so that you can explain to the staff what is the rationale what is there what is in in it for them okay so reason has to be very clear timing when this change will be implemented when it will be applicable with effect from when timing is also very important do we need it right away or can we implement it slowly gradually again it's a universal truth it's easy to implement things slowly gradually step by step as compared to implementing everything in one go right so if you want to immediately implement something like it's so urgent then it's called big bang if you want if you are implementing slowly gradually it's incremental so in our company like as i mentioned that we changed the commission structure right and so first thing we decided was whether it's a small change or a big change it was a big change because uh, it will affect all the sales team 
and it was not small changes it was a fundamental change to the formula so it was realignment or transformational please let me know t or r t yeah then we also then need to be very clear why why did we change the commission model what was the reason because that's the first thing the sales people will ask why the hell you guys have changed the model what's wrong with the existing one so we have to be prepared to answer that question you have to uh, identify to them what were the what was wrong with the existing one what was the objective of bringing the new one what is the benefit to the company what is the benefit to the sales people you have to sell it right the reason has to be very strong i'm not going to tell you the reason why we did it it's confidential timing should we implement it from tomorrow or should we implement it slowly gradually give them time to think give them some time let this year finish maybe from next year or we start with one branch and then move to other branches slowly gradually what is a safer way incremental right so yes it was not urgent it was nothing do or die situation so we adopted the incremental we tell them don't worry guys we still have a lot of time we will implement it from 1st of january next year okay and blah 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 Indeed. capacity and resources does the organization has the required resources such as the human resource financial resource technology of course when we are implementing any change you need to make sure that whatever resources are required uh, human resource financial resource it you have all those in place right so in our example this is not not applicable because uh, it was a, not a thing but if you're implementing a software then you need all the hardware the software uh, all these things the, the money to buy uh, uh, sap or oracle financials capability it means that whether the organization has implemented such change in the past or is it the first time it focuses on prior experience so uh, in our company the we have changed commission structures a couple of times in the past as well so we are well versed we are experienced we know how to handle it so we have the capability but supposing if we have not done it we are handling it for the first time then maybe we might make error we might need some consultants we might need someone who can expert who can help us you see the capability is basically are you doing it for the first time or have you done it in the past power power means that the that the change manager whoever is the main person whoever who is the sponsor or the owner of the change does he to have sufficient power and authority to enforce or implement this change for example in the tt4u question uh, it was the ceo who was leading the project does she have the power and authority to implement my bed or i love you approach yes she is the ceo in our case as well in the commission example it is not the finance it is not the marketing but the ceo is leading this project so yes the ceo has the authority to make changes uh preservation forget about it readiness that readiness means that you know you make sure that everybody is ready before the change all the training has been done blah 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 and resistance means that despite your best effort some people will still resist the change so you need to handle them you need to talk to them separately warn them fire them convince them whatever okay so again how do you know there's a question on change management it will it will be very simple it will use the word transformation or company is thinking of implementing the change please advise how it should be handled all those things okay 
okay right risk management strategy so risk management is a very dangerous topic ah sorry sorry not dangerous very important topic almost every attempt except for one attempt maybe there's always a question on risk management in each and every paper it's a big topic so we will cover these two now and then more in later slides so risk management strategies there are two two models one is uh, ex, this risk management it's called risk management strategy there are four strategies there are four things we can do with a risk either we can accept the risk that's one option or we try to reduce the risk that you know okay we implement control so the risk can be reduced we try to avoid the risk which means that altogether we are getting rid of the risk or we try and transfer the risk to a third party this is called tara model you see t a r a all right so i think in one of the questions we got that it was a chocolate company duls right there was some debate going on uh so operations director was saying that we must do nothing we must continue the hr director was saying we should immediately stop and look for other options the finance director was saying we should continue but built in more controls this is the thing acceptance avoidance reduction transfers there's one more thing called heat map i think it was just tested once no 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 not even once i think heat map it's very simple it's just a diagrammatic presentation you plot all the risks you plot all the risk on this diagram okay so if the company is facing like 20 risks just plot them on the diagram how can you plot it on y its probability on x its impact low medium high low medium high and you can just plot it like here one risk is here one is here one is here one is here one is here two risks falls in this box three risk and five risk here okay it's a visual presentation which box is the most dangerous box in your view i just increase the size which box here is the most dangerous box high high what do you think hh right so any risk any any risk which is in this box is very very dangerous we as an organization would must focus on covering those risks which are in this box okay got it and then uh, after that what are the two other boxes that these boxes and this box are the second ones and then after that um, we will come to these three boxes they are all the same and then after that we will look at these two boxes and then we will look at these boxes. so this model just visually helps you decide which risk to address first it helps you prioritize okay oh my god i need to rub all this now okay any questions on heat maps yes very good you must just be familiar with the basic concept that's it you don't need to do a phd just know what a heat map is so that something comes at least you know what what the hell it is 
okay and then enough information will be available uh, in the exhibits so that you can cover up your answer no arsalan koso has never been tested models are not tested like that all right guys so we are done with the top 10 important models of course ali that's the whole purpose of heat maps it's what time uh, it's, oh, it's a lot of time guys can you give me two minutes i need to move inside it's getting dark out and mosquitoes are sucking me give me a two minutes please i'll just move inside you can stretch your back for two minutes. Hi guys, uh, I'm back. Are you guys able to see me and hear me? Excellent. So we'll take a break in around 45 minutes. So every two hours you'll take a break, okay? I think around 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Okay, so the first important, another important topic is 
financial ratios. Eh, no, 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 no. Go back to your Word document. Go back to your Word document. Give the heading culture. And please type four to five headings under culture. This is how, this is how you can memorize. Go to culture, type culture, and can you just give me four to five headings under culture? Power structure. What else? Please type on the Word document. Think, think, think. Okay, done. Very good. So culture includes what things? Uh, power structure, the study of the leader, organizational structure, the organization chart, control systems, rituals, and routines. You must memorize these. And if you can remember symbols and stories, nothing like it. Okay, done. Now give another, please don't type here, Ben. Type it on the Word document. Uh, now, uh, context of change. Mention at least five things, six, five to six things on the Word document. Context of change. What will be the five to six headings you will speak about? Time starts now on your Word document. Very good, very good. 30 more seconds. Okay, so what are those? Uh, scope of change, reason of change, timing of the change, capacity slash resources, capability, power, readiness, resistance. There are eight. So must you must know five slash six. Mahavish, beta, nothing here. Ayushi, not here, please. On the Word document so that you can revise it from there. Okay. All right. Now, financial ratio. So sometimes a PNL is given, a balance sheet is given. In one of the exhibits, you might be provided with either a balance sheet, PNL, or both. So you will need to calculate certain ratios and talk about it. Okay. Now in SBL, it's a very different paper. Ratio analysis is basically trying to identify the reasons. It's more qualitative than quantitative. You know that, right? In the last two weeks of practice, we talked about it a lot. So I've just mentioned these few basic ratios which you need to focus on. All right, so on the PNL, the first thing uh, you will do is uh, talk about the sales trend, whether the sales is a revenue or turnover is going up, flat or going down. One paragraph on sales trend, very, very important component of any company. Sales is the bloodline of each company, right? After that, you can talk about GP margin, whether the margin percentage is constant, maintained, in improving or decreasing, you can talk about NP margins. And lastly, you can talk about ROS percentage, whether it's increasing, decreasing, or maintaining. 
on the balance sheet just talk about current asset ratio gearing and interest cover on and also try to always give one non financial ratio or a efficiency ratio for example the most easiest is revenue per employee okay in the exam these are the basic things uh, you can talk about giving reasons for variance is a must there's no the sbl they are not interested in your calculations they are more interested in the reasons secondly no need to show calculations in the sbl you just do it on your calculator and just give the the ratio directly type the ratio in your paragraph okay lastly uh you may want to focus more on material variances rather than smaller ones always prioritize the board is always interested in larger items significant items material items they are not interested in 1 dollar variance they are interested in a variance of 1 million dollars okay so you need to exercise some commercial sense what information you need to provide to the board it has to be significant and material so sometimes you may need to select which ratio you need to talk about so you can decide based on variance amounts not the percentages of variances but based on the amounts of variance the larger the amount it's more significant or more material right like in bco very good mahesh thank you you see now we are able to relate with so many cases we have done financial projection so this is another type so sometimes uh you may be given a projection it could be for any purpose it could be for a new product it could be for a new acquisition it could be for expansion anything it's a projection whenever you are given a projection you need to look at these five things what are the five things first you have to make sure that the projections are based on discounted cash flow that's the first thing then you can also cal quickly calculate the payback and talk about it this is the third one review the amounts and the assumptions that's very important that's where the garbar is that's where all the assumptions and stupidities are so you challenge the revenue numbers how what is the basis from where you got this how is this increasing each year so all the trends all the projections all the assumptions you need to look into them does it make logical sense if it is subjective it, if it doesn't make sense you need to cover it in your answer okay again you will focus on the materiality concepts the larger ones you need to definitely talk about in your projections after that you can check whether tax implications have been covered or not if it's covered then it's okay but if it's not covered then you need to ask question why tax considerations have not been taken into account lastly you may wish to suggest that a sensitivity analysis should be done or a what if analysis should be done so that various scenarios can be reviewed before we decide okay these are the five things it's a checklist it's a checklist which i use in my real life right uh... akshay don't get into so much uh, accounting complications it's not really important for sbl okay now guys please make a list open up your word document write financial projections and give the five point type the five checklist which we will look at time starts now
done. Okay. Financing structure, uh, not very important topic. Uh, I just cover it very quickly. Basically, there are two sources of financing. So companies, when they require funds, large funds for long-term plans, either they can raise funds through equity financing or they can raise funds through loan or debt-based financing. Which one is better? It depends. It depends on the pro. Both options has pros and cons. As a CFO, it is our job to identify the pros and cons to the board, and then the board can decide whether they want to go for equity financing or debt financing. So what are the pros and cons? Uh, equity financing, the cost is linked with profitability. Obviously, equity, it means that you will pay dividends. So if the dividend is paid when the company is profitable. So when the company is not making profits, you don't have to pay dividends. So that's an advantage of equity financing that uh, um, that um, you don't, you, the cost of financing is not fixed. It is depending on the company's performance. That's a very big advantage. But then there's a very big disadvantage of equity financing. It dilutes the existing shareholding pattern. So if you're issuing more shares, you're adding more partners, more owners to your business. So your own share is reducing. That's the big pro and a big con of equity financing. Other than that, you know, you don't need any collateral. It does not affect your gearings. And you know, one disadvantage will be may affect the culture or strategies as, you know, more shareholders, they join in, they have their own opinions. Other hand, debt financing, the biggest disadvantage is cost is fixed. I mean, it's a, you know, whether we make money or we don't make money, if we've taken a loan, we have to pay the financing cost, the interest. So the, the cost is not linked with business performance. That's a huge disadvantage, but then does not affect the ownership or culture of the company. So it, you know, when you take a loan, you're not adding partners or sharing the business with anyone. You retain your shareholding. However, it also requires collaterals and it affects, can it can adversely affect your gearing level. So you just, you just need to be familiar with the pros and cons of these two. Yes, very good. Right. Now budgets, I think only once this has been tested, whenever there is a question on budget, like uh, a financial data has been provided, in your paper in which one column is budget one column is actual and variance what do you do again there's a three item checklist which i always follow first of all the concept of flexed budget you know you cannot directly compare budgets with actuals i mean let's say the budget was based on 100000 units in actual, you produced 80,000 units. So obviously the costs and all those things in actual will be lower. They'll be based on 80,000 units. So you're not, you cannot compare actuals with the budgets because the base is different. The budget is based on 10, 100,000 units. The actual is based on 80,000 units. So the first thing is you revise the budget or you recalculate the budget based on 80,000 units. And then you start comparing line by line with actuals. So this approach is called flexed budget. So you are flexing or revising or not revising, recalculating the budget based on actual production volumes, and then you are comparing. Second thing, uh, actuals, I would like to compare with the flex budget as well as prior actuals if available. 
And the last thing, this one is most important for SPL. Reasons for variances. The board is interested in the reasons, not the numbers. Okay. So always remember these three things when you get a question on anything to do with budgets. But again, it was only tested once maybe. Not even once. I think it was in one of the specimen papers. Maybe, yes, uh, Vaishnavi, correct. Project management, a very important topic. It has been tested a couple of times in your exam. Project management, so what is a project? We all know, but just for clarity's sake, a project is a one-off special activity. It is one-off special activity which is other than the usual day-to-day -day operations, okay? What are the three project uh, tracking variables? How to track a project? The project is has three components. Each project has three variable or three components, quality, timeline, and cost. So if you want to control any project, you need to control the quality aspect, the timing or duration timelines or in the cost. If you want to track a project like budget versus actual, again, you will have three broad headings, quality aspects, timelines or duration and costs. So always remember a project has three components. And then there's a document called PID, Project Initiation Document. It's a very important document uh, because this is the first document for any project. This is presented to the board of directors so that they can uh, read about the proposed project and then they can you know, decide whether uh, they are approving the project or rejecting the project. Okay, it's a very, very important document. We have done like two questions on this already. Uh, what are the contents of a PID? There could be a background and an introduction. Then the project scope and objective has to be very clearly defined in the PID a cost benefit analysis and feasibilities. You have to identify all the key stakeholders that there's a project sponsor, who is the project manager, what is the project team, any internal users or department, and then external stakeholders like customers, suppliers, government, society, community, all depends on the project. It varies from project to project. So I've tried to give a uh, comprehensive list of possible stakeholders. What is the project duration and timelines? Are what are the major project risks? And risk will be relating to quality, timeline, cost. Any project constraints? Constraints will talk about human resource, financial resource, technology, like internal factors. Any major assumptions used in, in all those things? how the project will be monitored and monitoring and reporting procedures. So very comprehensive document. You must be familiar with the contents of a PID. Please look at the list for 10 seconds. And then I will, I will ask you to prepare this list contents on your Word document. Okay, now please type the contents of a PID based on your memory on the Word document.
Ten more seconds. All right, someone was asking, what is the difference between a project sponsor and a project manager? What, what are the roles of project sponsor and a project manager? Very basic, like there are two different people. So project sponsor is the overall owner of the project. He is responsible and accountable. He is the leader of the project, top man. Normally, a sponsor is one of the directors, okay? A project manager will manage the day-to-day -day affairs of the project. He's a technical guy. He will do the technical things, the, all the things. He reports to the sponsor. So sponsor may not be a technical guy, but he's a senior person who takes responsibility of the project. He owns the project. He will provide guidance to the manager. He will solve the problems for the manager. And he is the one who is answerable to the board. Okay. Yes. E-business. Again, a very important topic. And these days, it's all about online business. Right. So, what are the advantages of an online business? No geographical limitation. That's the biggest advantage of having an online business that there is no geographical limitation. Customers does not depend on any physical outlet. They just go on your website and place an order. Obviously, it will lead to more revenue. It is cheaper, lower costs, because, you know, there are less physical outlets, lower staff, lower rents, and then customer convenience, 24-7, all the websites and all those things. And it's easy, it's easy, improve marketing, e-marketing. Please have a look at this list for five seconds. And then please type, what are the advantages of e-business, type on your Word document. Okay, type now, I'm just hiding it. Okay. However, there will be disadvantages of e-business as well, right? Everything in life, everything in business has pros and cons. So what are the disadvantages? Not all customers use internet. That's a fact. Okay. Not all customers use internet to buy, do online shopping. They might not have the credit card, they might not be literate, they might not have internet, they might not have a laptop, whatever the reason. And then there is a one-time investment required to set up an online business. What are the examples of various one-time setup costs? You need hardware costs, you need to, that means you need to upgrade your hardware, servers, IT infrastructures, software licenses, a website development cost. You need to increase your IT staff. So that will be an increase in salaries. You need to integrate or link your systems with the online setup. So all these are one time costs or investments which are required to set up an online business. Other than that, there are huge security risks. Like the risk of hacking. That hacker can try to will ha try to hack your company, uh, viruses, cyber frauds or crimes. 
then issues with data security, data privacy, all those things. Then it could lead to some legal complications, redundancy costs. I mean, if you are shutting down your branches and moving towards online. So these are various disadvantages of e-business. Have a look at it for five seconds. Memorize it. Okay, please type these advantages on your Word document. Leave it, Elizabeth. Online business has legal complications right? because you are global. <laughs> nice. e-marketing remember these guys top uh, topic is uh, the this topic guys e-marketing we recently did in one of the case studies so what is e-marketing e-marketing when we use internet technologies what are the options of e-marketing so many options search engine optimizations like google search seos websites emails social media Facebook, like Insta, YouTube, Twitter, WhatsApp, TikTok, even I think um, LinkedIn is an important one, right? Uh, online discounts, then blogs, forums, influencers, links on various related websites, online newsletters. You have to be familiar with this list okay we did it in bco and optima oh there were two questions yeah very nice you need to memorize this list okay five seconds and then i want you to type Okay, now please type this list. Oh. Done. Okay, ten more seconds. Guys, it's uh, somebody is making scratches on my screen. Who's that? Don't uh, make marks on my documents, please. Can you please remove it? Whoever was it?
Okay, so guys, you have to remember, it's high time that you remember all these pointers. Huh? It's just last three days. If you don't remember these pointers of all the important topics, you will not pass because then you will struggle with the basic concept. High time you remember all this. So yes, tomorrow, please, if you are weak with this 25 topics, tomorrow spend two hours and memorize the top 25. The last thing you want is not remembering the pointers. Okay, please, very, very foundational thing. It's not working, Buzula. When is the break? Uh, 15 more minutes, one five. What are the advantage of e-marketing? Again, very similar to the e-business. It's global reach, which means no geographical limitation, lower cost. So e-marketing is cheap. It's not costly to send emails or SMS or WhatsApp. Hey, did we mention WhatsApp? Ah, it's there. And then it's 24 hour marketing and you can do personalized marketing. One of the disadvantages, limited customers. So very similar advantages, disadvantages as compared to online business. The concept is always the same. Okay. Big data, or it's also called big data analytics. Okay. So, big data or big data analytics is that now organizations, there are softwares, they are artificially intelligent softwares which can analyze huge amount of data. All right. And now, uh, you know, there's a saying that data is the new oil. Understand, data is the new oil. So it's so important that in this digital era, uh, organizations have access to so much data. So there is no use if you don't analyze those data. So the big data are specialized softwares which dives into a large pool of data. And then they look for trends, patterns, likes, dislikes, you know, based on your profile. So they dive into your social media. Like they will analyze your Facebook, they will analyze your Insta, they will analyze your other social media presence and then they will try to form a digital personality like they will just try to see what are your likes and dislikes and then based on that they will automatically start sending you advertisements according to your likes and dislikes okay you try that out you will see so why don't you try it tonight? Okay. So maybe, you know, there's a very famous actress. Uh, my One of my in favorites, Indian actress, Sunny Leone. How many of you know Sunny Leone? I don't care. Just say Sunny Leone, Sunny Leone several times in the night. And I'm pretty sure tomorrow something about Sunny Leone will be there in your Facebook. Because this big data, they are so intelligent, they hear what you are saying from your mobile. Or you just Google Sunny Leone, and then for the next three, four days, you will start getting things about Sunny Leone on your Facebook, even when you're not looking for it. This is big data. Or you type, or you start. Uh, uh, type uh, Maldives or honeymoon. And then you see in the next three days, you will start getting sponsored ads, classified ads on so many, on your Google, email, this, that, why, how? It is the bloody big data which is working in the background. 
they're analyzing your social media likes and dislikes and then they start pitching you products okay very very powerful what's the advantage what is the advantage to the organization why should they use big data obviously it gives us deeper insight then it helps us do better marketing and pricing improved customer service increased competitiveness development of customized personalized products and of course new sources of revenue additional sources of revenue as i said oil uh, you know data is the new oil so if you get data and you can analyze it you can develop new products you can develop marketing strategies pricing strategies sales promotion interaction with customers engagement blah so many things you can do right all right but then there must be certain this yeah personalized marketing very good oh very nice smile yes Shin. um so what are the disadvantages of big data of course there's a data security risk like so much storing of so much data that's a big challenge right and when you have so much data uh that's the red guys my wife is calling me All right, guys, sorry. So disadvantage is the storage of the data. It's huge, it's costly, it's risky, hacking. And of course, there may be legal issues because nowadays data privacy and all those things is a big sensitive topic, right? Right, guys, I need you to type all this. So please have a look at the list for five seconds. I will hide it. And then you need to type the advantages and disadvantages of uh, this thing time starts now Please type the advantages and disadvantages of big data. This has been tested two times in your paper.
Okay. Last topic and then we'll have a break. But CRM, it's not an important thing anyways. Uh, what is a, just, you must be just familiar with the terminology. What is CRM? CRM are specialized softwares to, mis, to maintain customer relationship through regular communication with customers electronically. Obviously, right? You cannot talk to each and every customer manually. So these are softwares which interacts with the customer regularly, like happy birthday, happy anniversary, payment reminders, feedbacks, complaints, tracking services, uh, emails, demos, all these things, they are now done automatically through softwares, yeah, SMS or emails or apps or notifications, whatever. So most common nowadays is apps or emails, right? I'm, I receive regular emails and app notifications, even SMS as well. What are the advantages of CRM? Obviously, you know, uh, better customer, better customer communication with customer, better engagement with customer. We know their likes and complaints and feedback. It will give us some comp edge, blah, blah, blah. Okay, sorry, last, last thing, not same as big data. Are you crazy, Sam? CRM is a software which talks, interacts with the customer. Happy anniversary, happy birthday, you looking good. Big data doesn't talk to you. It is working in the background. It analyzes your data. Okay, Sam? Um, so there was a time in one of the live classes, uh, some of the advantages of for CRM, they were somehow related to big data. Maybe the advantages can be the same. Yeah, that's right. But, but you said that's is it. big data and CRM the same thing? No, they are two different things. Advantages can be generic, right? More customer, more this, this. But the things are two different things. No, no, I meant that the advantages. Okay, I, all right, all right. Okay, okay. Uh, one last thing which reminds me is something called mobile apps. This was not, uh, it's not on my list of this document. So please add mobile apps. So a couple of times I've seen in your exam that the examiner is asking about smartphone apps. So now what are the advantages of smartphone apps? How is an app different from a website? So the biggest advantage is accessibility, right? Um, not everybody carries laptop all the time. But everybody has a mobile in their pocket all the time, even in toilet. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. So it's like, it's always with the customer. Secondly, it's very easy for the customer to, you know, use apps as compared to opening a laptop. So convenience, so accessibility, fast convenience. Right, it's if it's on the app, he can place transactions. Uh, he can do whatever very easily. Notifications, so you know there will be pop-ups. There can be notifications, so the customer can immediately know if something is new or happening. So the notifications are there. So it's ex accessibility, convenience, faster notifications. Customer can interact easily, give complaints, feedback, chat, um, you know, what's that? Helpline, all those things. So definitely mobile apps uh, is much more superior uh, as compared to websites because of the various advantages. So you will remember the additional advantages of a app, live chat, yes live chat yeah good all right guys so let's take a break hmm? let's take a break and 
um, can we have a 20 minute break? Because we have another two, two and a half hours to go after that. Uh, it is like 8.06 here. No, 9.06 in Pakistan. Oh, let's say 05. 9.25. So let's say 9.30 sharp. Pakistan time, I will see you. 9.30. Okay, so it's like 25 minutes break. Be refreshed, eat something, and then come. All right, sir, guys. I have a question, sir. Not during the break. <laughs> Can we do it after the break? Yeah, sir. Yeah. Yes, Bilal, I'm in the way. All right, guys, see you in a bit.
Because I want to join something.
Yes, Mahavish, are you there? I can't hear you. Yes, sir. You were trying to ask something before? Yes, sir. I want to ask about the, in the, uh, the context of the project PID. What is the basic difference between the background and the source? It's really confusing. Then ignore the background. Okay. Means what is the basic we have to discuss? What is the reason of this project? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, guys, are you back? Can we start now? Okay, good. Now, IT risks and security, okay? We have done this topic several times in several questions. The first thing is why is IT risk or IT security important? Not risk, IT. Why is IT security important? Or why is cyber security important? So please, there are like three, four reasons why it's important. What are the implications if there's a breach? So let's go through this. First, go through the list and I will ask you to type. So why is IT security important or cyber security important? Number one, it can, you know, IT breach can do business disruption. So anything which goes wrong with IT, uh, it will cause huge or serious business disruption. Your business may stop for a few days, few hours, few weeks. It can lead to reputational issues. It can lead to loss of customers, hence loss of revenue, hence loss of market share. Also there's a chance of legal cases by customers. There could be regulatory fines and penalties, and maybe incorrect decision making based on erroneous data. You can ignore this one, forget about it. Okay. But these are the five things you need to remember very, very clearly. It leads to business, business disruption, reputational risks, loss of customer and revenues legal cases, regulatory fines, and if it is worst case scenario, even going concern, okay? Now please write why IT security is important time starts now. Give me at least five reasons why IT or cyber security is important. Please type on your Word document. Ten more seconds. Because whatever we are doing right now, you have to make sure you memorize it. Okay, that that's the whole purpose of making you type, so you are able to memorize it, retain it in your head. Very standard stuff now. Okay. Now, security aspects. We have to secure our hardware and we also have to secure our data and software, right? How can we secure hardware? Through physical access control, like 
proper servers like just imagine your server room a server room is a place where where you keep your physical servers so those rooms should be secured security guards biometrics swipe cards cctv cameras and then fire protections generators power supply so this is some basic list of it security measures relating to hardware regarding software the most important control the most important control is password you we all know right look think about your email account think about your facebook account you don't want people to enter into it so you have password protect so password is the perhaps most important security option tool for data protection password management has its own several requirements that password should be like alpha numeric it should be changed regularly it should not be written or disclosed to anyone these two are very important locked down after three incorrect or five incorrect attempts and otp one time password that's very very important you see you remember when you do an online transaction you receive a code on your mobile phone you enter that code and then so that's one time passwords after that you can talk about having strong firewalls firewall is what is a firewall it is a specialized software for uh, you know hacking it is used for hack prevention against hacking so if you want to protect yourself from hacking you have to have firewalls and antiviruses okay then you must have backups you must have audit trails they are also known as system logs system logs or audit trails are basically you know it tells us who which user has uh entered the system at what time what activity is done so it's a log of user user log segregation of duty so you must remember all these things as um, i software or data security measures please have a look at this for five seconds then i will give you time to type okay time starts now please write at least four to five security measures for data protection data protection all right done okay can you type three security measures for hardware protection now three measures for hardware security because when we talk about it security it needs to cover both physical and logic data
Five more seconds. Just write short, short. No lengthy stories, please. Just pointers. Yes, Ali, you are right. We, through audit trail, we will know whose user ID was compromised, right? And then we can trace from there. And also, Ali, I uh, when you ask a question, do not type privately to me. Nobody is uh, able to see your comments, right? Please select everyone. You are from my uh, mock script checking base uh, group, right? Yes, Ananya. Uh, sir, I have a request, sir, uh, that risk management, like there are three to four different types of questions, right? So like at the end of the class or like whenever you feel like you can put it out, can you please like tell the different types of questions under risk management category so that it would be easy for us to determine? I will. I will. Sure, sir. Thanks. Okay, let's move on. So now we are done with the business related topics and now our corporate governance topics are starting in your exam the weightage of corporate governance topics is less and business related topics is more like 70 30 okay so uh Corporate governance topics are not very complicated, not, not a mod, no models involved or anything. So the first topic is very common professional code of ethics. We all know there are five professional code of ethics, all CFOs, all finance directors, all qualified accountants have to follow these professional code of ethics. It's integrity. Integrity means honesty, straightforward, truthful, blah, blah, blah. Objectivity means that the, you know, you CFO should take decisions based on fact, no biasness, no conflict of interest, very important word, no undue influences, professional competence and due care, confidentiality and professional behavior. Okay, you need to remember these, these uh, are uh, applicable on all professionals, qualified professionals, okay? Even you guys, once you become a member, a full-time member of ACCA. The next small topic is called public interest. Sometimes the question has been asked, talk about public interest. So whenever the question says, you know, assess the public interest. So when we say public interest, it means employees, customers, suppliers, society. As a CFO, you know, my first priority is shareholders. Obviously, they are the owners of my company. But in addition to my loyalty to shareholders, I also have to be considerate uh, for these four stakeholders, collectively, they are known as public interest, employees, customers, suppliers, society. So, for example, if we are mixing some low-grade, inferior, harmful raw material in order to, or you are mixing some illegal raw material in order to, you know, uh, double our profit, that's wrong because our customer's health is at stake. So as a CFO, it is my duty. It is part of my professional requirement then that I raise this flag that something is wrong. So as a CFO, other than shareholders, I also uh, need to protect the interest of the public interest or the public, which basically includes these four. Okay. Corporate code of ethics. 
So a professional code of ethics basically is issued by professional bodies like ACCA and SIMA and engineers body, pilots body, professional bodies, doctors bodies. And a corporate code of ethics is basically issued by corporations or organizations. It is applicable to their employees. Okay. Corporate code of ethics also talk about three broad things employees, customers, suppliers, society. So you see public interest uh, components and corporate code of ethic components are pretty much the same. When we talk about employees, aspects like pay, staff turnover, training, working conditions, health and safety, gender, discrimination, diversity, all these are things which are covered under corporate code of ethics and for customers and for suppliers, okay? Not very important, but you must remember these three broad headings. Chairman and CEO, in every board of directors, you will see a chairman and a CEO. These are two different positions, okay? Chairman is responsible for the running of the board. The CEO is responsible for the running or day-to-day -day running of the organization, two different roles. In a listed company, it is mandatory that these two roles are done by two separate persons. In a family owned or a private limited, one person can do both the roles. But in a listed company, you have to be split between two people. Why? What is the advantages of splitting the role between chairman and CEO? Yeah. What are the advantages? Segregation of duty. Obviously, these are two different rules. So two different roles. So two different people will lead to segregation of duties. Chairman is able to challenge the CEO. Chairman is more senior. He is the highest senior person of the organization. So someone above the CEO, he can challenge the CEO, you can monitor the performance of the CEO. Other directors, employees can communicate with chairman if they have concerns relating to CEO, okay? And higher shareholder confidence as chairman is normally a non-executive director. Forget about the disadvantages. Um, very, very important topic that you must know why the role of chairman uh, and CEO needs to be split. What are the advantages? Have a look for five seconds, and then I will give you 10 seconds to type on your Word document. Mm, Naveed is saying that there was a question in March attempt on the role of chairman and CEO. Very good. So March attempt, they focused on corporate governance. Eh? All right, please write four advantages of splitting the role time starts now. Okay, 10 more seconds. All right. NEDs, uh, I don't think NEDs have been tested uh, 
but you must be familiar you should be familiar with the concept non executive directors are outside directors uh they are not employees of the company they just get a flat fee for being a non executive director they are they're supposed to be independent so that you know that is why they are not employees they they tend to protect the interest of the shareholders and uh, what they do they bring outside experience they monitor the performance of the executive directors they they add confidence to the shareholders right so what are the advantages of neds here they bring independence they have external experience and wider perspective they can challenge the performance of ceo and executive directors employees can discuss confidential sensitive matters like whistle blowing and company can comply with regulatory requirements so that's the advantage of neds okay the disadvantage is you know you the ned might not be 100% independent there might be some familiarity biasness some friendship and they might not be able to give sufficient time to the business because you know there is not their job right it's it's a fixed thing so they might anyways board committees so again a uh, important topic uh, audit committee risk committee have been tested board committee means that there are sub committees of the board yes daniel correct there are sub committees within the board so there's a full board and within the board we make smaller committees as well okay with the within the same members there is no outsider in the committee within the full board you may have smaller committees the four the more the four most common committees are nomination committee it has 100% or majority have to be neds remuneration committee 100% have to be neds so remuneration committee they decide what do they do as the name says they decide the salaries the benefits the bonuses of the ceo and the other executive directors and senior staff that is why it says they have to be 100% non executive yes and the third one is audit committee very important it 100% neds what do they do they do four things remember what do they do audit committee do four things financial statements and internal controls external auditors internal auditors whistle blowing these are the four core tasks of audit committee they look at the financial statements and the correctness of financial statements and internal controls they manage the external auditors they manage the internal auditor and they arrange whistle blowing activities please note all members have to be ned that's the requirement of audit committee and at least one member should have recent expertise in finance and audit obviously it's an audit committee so ideally majority or maximum members should be finance and audit people but at least at least one person should be a finance and audit experience person in the committee you can't have one air hostess one chef and one pilot in an audit committee they don't know jack shit about financial statements right so at least one has to be finance and audit risk committee majority has to be neds and as the name says they are more focused on risk management related activities of the organization like implementing the the policies the procedures the processes identifying the key risks looking at mitigation the risk registers training all those things now the most important topic why the f do we have committees what's the need for committees baba the whole board is there why do you need to have smaller committees within the board there must be some added advantages of these committees very very important wait and anya first of all more focused on audit committee 
will be more focused towards its mandate, which is financial statements, internal audit, external audit, whistleblowing. Risk committee will be more focused towards risk management related activities. Because the whole board cannot focus on these things, right? But if you have a small committee specifically made for these activities, they will be more focused. They'll be more specialized. Actually, these are two, diff two, uh, two advantages, one and two, okay? More specialized. Uh, how? In audit committee, we will try to keep those people who have finance and audit backgrounds. In risk committee, we will keep those nominate those peer directors who have risk management background. In nomination committee or REM committee, we will nominate people with HR background, like right? you see, so you can select people with the right expertise, so more specialization. And then more time can be spent by committees as full now, of course. So the committees, they meet more frequently or they give more time, they, they meet extra, right? And then the board can focus more on strategic matters and then higher involvement of NEDs, or increases shareholder confidence. This is a very important thing. Please, can you read this? And then I will ask you to type, time starts now. Okay, please type now. Short pointers. I need five advantages of having a separate board committee. Okay, 10 more seconds, all right. Yes, Ananya. Oh, hi, sir. So last time there was one question on, uh, you know, uh, advantages of having a strategic committee board. So like it was, it was some question out of blue and I didn't know how to handle it. Like, how can you handle the question? What's your question? Advantages of having a strategic committee board. Tell me. What do you think will be the advantage of having a strategic committee? More focused and specialized. On what? More focused on what? Uh, on strategy related matters. Thank you. More specialized in what? Uh, about the business matters. Uh, in strategic management matters, right? Yeah. Then what else? What advantage? Uh, that's it. Increase shareholder confidence. No. Tell me the second bullet. Oh, more time can be spent by committee as full board as limited time. So can they spend more time on strategic matters? Yes, sir. Then what else? Board can focus more on other, other matters. matters. Okay. Then higher involvement of NEDs. Colors. I mean, it cannot get simple than this, right? Yeah. So it's very, very important that you guys remember these basic pointers 
it will fit into any kind of case study. If you just can't do this, then you're not fit to be a CFO. Okay, Nanya? Yeah. Easy now? Yeah. You want you want the question to come again? I would it would be great. <laughs> yes, Bhanu. Uh, hi, sir. Can you explain the difference uh, between higher involvement by NEDs and this more time spent? Just I was trying, just thinking in terms of drafting. More, what will I, yeah. No, more time spent means that the committee will be able to spend more time on the activity rather than the full board. Board has limited time, right? Board cannot. Yeah. So committees can meet more often, more longer to spend more time. Okay, and then higher involvement by NEDs? Means that all the members are NEDs, right? So they have an upper hand. Like audit committee, all members are NEDs. Risk committee, all members are NEDs. So, you know, it's better, right? Oh, in terms of like corporate governance. That yes. Way. Okay, yes. thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, remuneration and reward of directors. Just one thing I want to tell that the, the remuneration one portion should be fixed for the executive directors, but there should be a variable or performance-based portion as well. Directors cannot have fixed salary and fixed bonuses, okay? When you become a director, when the more senior you become, you, there will be a fixed component and some component of your remuneration will be attached to the performance of the company and your performance, so a variable component. That's it. Insider trading uh, simply means that, you know, directors or CFO, they have access to confidential information, right? So I'm not allowed to misuse that information or use that information for any personal benefit. If I use this uh, that confidential information for my own personal benefit, it's a crime and I will be imprisoned for a long time. So insider trading and dealing is not allowed. It's illegal. It's unethical. Family owned versus listed company. Um, you know, family owned. The, what are the differences between a family owned and a listed company? Uh, you know, on a listed company, more corporate governance regulations are applicable. Obviously, in a, in a family owned they are private limited, so less corporate governance, but in a listed company, stringent, not even more, stringent corporate governance regulations are applicable. The role of chairman and CEO are all split in the listed company. There has to be a sufficient number of NEDs in a listed company. In a family owned, you may not require NEDs because corporate governance is not you know, applicable that much on a family owned. Board committees, so obviously when there are NEDs, there'll be board committees, board is accountable to external shareholders, decisions are based on voting rights. In a family owned, decisions are not based on voting rights. It's if the dad says uh, to be done, it's to be done. Directors remuneration are based on performance, high focus on risk management, whistleblowing. So these are all the features of a listed company. You will not find these features in a private limited or a family owned business. Or even if you find these, it will be very small or very insignificant. Okay. So these are the things which are different in a listed company. Uh, this line I'm not able to remove, you know, I'm really pissed off. Someone made this line. I don't know who made this line. I can close this document uh, or maybe the chat. let's change screen. Even if I change screen, it's there. It's in the Zoom. So I'll have to log out and then log in. Shit, man. Okay. Just looking at what's left. Too much is left. 
Okay, integrated reporting is the next topic. It is a topic which has been tested a couple of times in your paper. It's an important topic and it is a slippery topic. Slippery in the sense, it is a little bit weird. Some students may struggle with the concept. Okay. So I'll try to make it easier. Just remember that there are three things, three things in this topic. The topic is IR, right? So there are three things or three components. Not components, okay. Three things in IR which you need to cover in your answer. The first thing is difference between a conventional financial statement and IR. So what is the difference between a financial statement, the one which we are normally used to versus an integrated report? So financial statement is historic. IR is futuristic. Financial statement is mostly financial. 90% is financials. IR is not mostly financials it also covers all other aspects of the, the all the aspects of the business including financials but it is not only financials financial statement is focusing on shareholders whereas ir focuses on stakeholders financial statements less emphasis on social and environmental activities of the organization whereas ir they they you know highlight uh, social and environmental activities of the organization financial statements talks about share capital only whereas ir talks about six capitals including share capital so you must be familiar with the differences Second component is what are those six capitals in your answer? So, okay. So, six capitals are basically financial capital. It talks about the financial performance of the organization, manufacturing capital. Here, we talk about all the tangible assets. Tangible asset means non current assets and current assets it talks about intellectual capital this is all intangible assets like research and development brands patents human capital talks about employee related matters social capital talks about customer supplier society government like public interest and natural capital talks about environmental matters like pollution recycling carbon okay these are the six capitals whereas, whereas a financial statement only talks about share capital okay the third component is what are the advantages of IR? What are the advantages of IR? Advantages slash disadvantages of IR. So obviously, what are the advantages of IR? Since IR is a voluntary disclosure, it's a voluntary disclosure, okay? It enhances the reputation, organization's image and reputation for terms. IR has a lot more information about the business and it's a voluntary thing. So those organizations who publish integrated reports, their image, their reputation for transparency, for being open, truthful is much more as compared to a non-IR organization. Effective communication with all stakeholders. As we said that, you know, IR is focusing more on stakeholders other than shareholders so it's a good way of engaging with all your key stakeholders demonstrate how organization create value leave that out it integrates social and environmental aspects so it focuses on its highlights the organization's social activities environmental activities so that you know in today's world 
a lot of people are interested in your social and environmental activities. So this is the document which really highlights all these things. It focuses on six capitals, better understand our baki. All right. So three, four advantages you must know of IR. It's a voluntary, so it increases the uh, reputation, image and reputation, better communication with stakeholders, identify social and environmental activities. It focuses on six capital. Uh, maybe we are able to attract investment at a lower cost of capital because of greater information. We are more transparent. So we will be able to attract capital at a lower cost and it may give comp edge over other companies. But there are certain disadvantages. Too much information, too much commercial information is disclosed, which is not good. Obviously, competitors might take undue advantage of this. And then the valuation of six capital is quite subjective. How do you value human capital? How do you value social capital? So it's not that straightforward. So there is a lot of subjectivity, uh, you know, involved in uh, all these things. So now coming to back to this table, if you get a question on IR in your exam, I repeat, if you get a question on IR in your exam, these are the three possible things you may need to talk about. Just remember these three components or things. First of all, try to talk about a little bit of differences between a financial statement and the integrated report. You can name the six capitals and in the end, you can also give advantages. So if it's a 15 mark question, 18 mark question, I am pretty sure all these three components needs to be talked about. I think in one of the case studies, I believe it was Highlight Hotel or... Uh, maybe highlight hotel, you know, there's an 18 marks or a 15 marks question on IR. So all these three components, so just remember that whenever you get a heavy duty question on IR, you have to touch base on all these things. Of course, you need to read the requirement, but directly, indirectly, these three things will need to be covered. Smartware, okay. Yeah, smartware. IR uh, thinking, so integrated thinking and integrated reporting, they're the same thing. Integrated thinking is the mindset, integrated reporting is, is the reporting document, you understand? Integrated thinking and integrated reporting, same concept. Uh, integrated reporting is the outcome, the, you know, the report of integrated thinking and all this is IR, integrated reporting, integrated thinking. Don't get confused with the words. Yes. Yes, Farzana. Uh, hi, sir, hope you're well. Uh, I just wanted to ask if the examiner wanted me to ask or answer me specific questions regarding the six cap capitals, what could be the question like? There is a question in one of your specimen papers. It will say, uh, analyze the performance of the company in terms of six capital. Oh, okay. So you will first talk about financial capital. Some financials will be given. You can talk about it. Then you can look at human capital. Some KPIs will be given, staff turnover and all this and that. So each individually, you need to write some info, uh, you know, some uh, comments and information will be available in the exhibit on each of them. Okay, so performance being the keyword for six capital. No, it will say I evaluate yes, the perform. Yeah, something like that. But IR, the word IR will be there. Performance okay. and IR both will be there. Okay. Siri. Yes, Siri. Sir, uh, my question is also regarding the six capital only. So. If we are analyzing the six capitals using, you know, human, you know, finance, all, what would be the recommendation? Nothing. No recommendation required. You will just say whether it's improving or depleting. Uh, there's a very nice question okay. which I did 
on six capital i think uh, you can watch uh, this it's an old june webinar last year uh, i think i i solved a question on six capital but it's straightforward okay dcs yeah it was dcs where there was a question on ir yes louis so shall we use a tabular format not necessarily not not really okay so ir is a complicated topic so don't try to do a phd in ir just remember what are the three components differences with the financial conventional statements six capitals and advantages disadvantages try to use them in your answer it will fit somehow uh, you know nothing much can be done social footprint and environmental footprint again the wave same thing social footprint talks about employees customers suppliers society the public interest thing and environmental footprints it talks about pollution carbon recycling you know using scarce resources very general you must just know the meaning of these words social footprint and for environmental footprints footprints means uh, uh, impact okay uh, so environmental impact or activities footprints is a sexy word uh, invite simply means environmental impact or activities okay of the organization now risk management risk management we have already covered in a lot of detail in our uh, previous classes right so i will not go into lengthy lectures I will just touch upon what, uh, what Ananya said that, sir, what kind of questions can come? Hmm? So risk management, again, uh, what are the various types of questions? Let me type somewhere I can type here. Uh, uh, First of all, most simple, identify the key risks. This is the most straightforward questions. Identify the key risks and give recommendation. So whenever the question says identify the key risks, you will need to refer to this list. This is a list of the risks which any organization faces you must remember or memorize these risks so if the question says identify the key risks in your brain you start going through this list and wherever you can find something related to that particular case study you will cover that when when the question says identify the key risk always try to name the risk it's very important that you use these terminologies business risk strategic risk financial risk liquidity risk credit risk fx risk interest rate risk market risk market share or competitive risk and then political risk legal and compliance risk environmental risk reputational risk health and safety technology risk, operational risk, intellectual risk. So these are, there could be many more, but these are the top, like top 10, 15 risks. Okay. So you must know what they mean, which I know you know by now, and you must memorize this. So the first type of question is identify the key risks. The second type of question, which normally comes or which may come, is basically risk register said that you might be given a risk register 
and you will be asked to evaluate the risk register, whether it looks okay, whether the impacts have been properly defined, whether the recommendations are there, is there any columns missing? So a complete focus on risk register. Uh, you will not be asked to prepare a risk register. Okay, you will not be, asked, I repeat, you will not be asked to prepare a risk register. A risk register will be given to you in one of the exhibits and you might be asked to evaluate or, you know, assess whether it is adequate or not. Now, what is a risk register here? So this, these are the columns which should be there in a risk register. So the, the risk must be there. What is the risk about? A description of the risk. The impact. What will be the impact if this risk happens? Let me increase the screen size. Then what are the chances or likelihood or probability of happening? Priority of the risk. Is it a high risk, medium risk, low risk? Then we talk about the mitigation action, that what is the organization doing in order to minimize this risk? Owner, who is the owner of that risk? So for a credit risk, the finance or the CFO will be the owner of credit risk, right? It's a financial thing. And most important, next review date. When this register or this item will be reviewed, it can be monthly, it can be quarterly, it can be six monthly, depending on the nature, the severity, whatever. But it should be clearly defined when it will be reviewed, like the frequency. Okay, any questions on risk register? Oh yes, Tasni, risk register has been there. <laughs> We did a question yesterday, right? Or day before yesterday, or risk register two, two, three days back. I think it was uh, NCCP. Yeah. Talk about the adequacy of the impact and mitigation. Yes, Banu. Sir, uh, if you go up slightly, there was a, on the recommendations you mentioned, if we reverse, uh, you know, like, Mm. Uh, it says reverse it to arrive at recommendation. What do you mean by that? I don't mean anything. <laughs> it's simple. Mm. How do you recommend? How would you I... how would you draft your recommendations? You look at the risk, you look at the root cause, and you try to address that. So when you try to address that, it will automatically become a recommendation. Okay. The third type of question uh, which can come is um, risk management process. That the, you, the examiner may ask you to analyze the organization's entire risk management process. You understand? So risk management process has certain steps. So you may be asked to assess the adequacy of the risk management process. So what are the risk management processes? I'm sure it's mentioned somewhere here. Yeah. It's all there. So you need to be memorizing and very familiar with the notes. So the risk management process is the first thing is a commitment from the top management, the board, should be involved in risk management. They should take risk management seriously, and they should have a so the they should have a risk committee. There should be commitment. There should be a risk committee, and then all these activities like the risk register thing that you know make a list of the thing. So all the risk register comes in now. That we will prepare the risk registers, analyze the impact. We will prioritize. We will make actions. We will make the register, regular monitoring, all those things. And then training, that staff needs to be trained on risk management policies and procedures. 
For larger companies, we may also appoint risk managers. This is for very complex companies like an oil gas company or oil refinery or something which, is, which has high health and safety risks or a lot of complications. There you can appoint a risk manager. Even for larger companies, you have risk audits as well. So all these collectively, these steps, are known as risk management activities or risk management process of an organization. Okay, any questions? Ananya, so coming back to you, these are the three most common types of questions I have seen so far. There was one or two smaller questions here and there, ignore it, but these are the three broad or most repeated type of questions in uh, in your paper. You must be very, very strong hands-on on these. Yes, sir, and also risk management framework is Tara model, right, sir? I don't know. I don't get into these complications. Yeah, you can. Risk management framework or risk management strategies is Tara. Okay, uh, Vidhi. Sir, I had the same question that if it's a framework, shall we put a process or shall we go for a strategy? Pro a process is the one I showed you. Yeah. That so Tara, model, Tara model was a four mark question. I don't even sweat about it. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. So risk management, uh, uh, we I didn't talk about this. Uh, risk diversification is okay. Types of question that's very important. Risk management process is very important, and risk register. These are the most important things. Okay. Hmm. What will be the advantages of risk committee? Again, very simple, very repetitive, more focused, more specialized, more time can be spent by the committee, board can focus more, higher involvement of NED, higher shareholder confidence. I've heard this before as well. You see, so these advantages can fit into any committee, audit committee, risk committee, strategic, whatever committee. Then there is this four line of defense. Uh, let me check uh, something. Okay, we'll cover it in a bit. So done with uh, risk management. Internal controls, I think this is the last topic. Internal controls, again, I, you see a very, very important topic. It is tested very, very frequently in your exams that you will be asked to identify the weaknesses and give recommendations. So it's a very common sense question. It can, all the information will be there in the exhibit. You will need to read, identify whatever mistakes you can spot. Talk about the impact. Why do you think it's a weakness? Obviously there must be some negative impact on the company you need to explain that and then give recommendations from your common sense internal audit i think this is an important topic for this time that is why i am talking about it internal audit what is an internal audit it is basically a assurance function it is an it's an assurance function but internal so external audit is also an assurance function, but it is external within the organization to ensure that the governance process, risk management and controls are working. What do these guys do? They do all the things, they audit everything. They review the risk management procedures, they review all the internal controls, they look at accounting controls and reportings. They look at operational efficiencies, they look at legal compliance, they do special investigations, everything, whatever the mandate is given to them by the board, they do it. 
Now, this one is important. Does all organization need to have internal audit? It depends. It's a, you know, it's a subjective thing, right? All department, all organizations will have marketing, they will have uh, finance, they will have all the IT, but internal audit, some may have, some may not have, right? So how do we decide? If you're a consultant, if you're a consultant, how can we recommend uh, what factors based on which we should have or have not? So first of all, the most easy is any legal requirement. So for example, listed companies, it is mandatory to have an internal audit. So khalas, discussion end, as a legal requirement, you have to have. But supposing there is no legal requirement, then you can look at other aspects, like the size of the organization. The larger the size, the more stronger the case for having internal audit, complexity and growth. So size, complexity and growth, the larger, the stronger case for having internal audits. Risk levels, so if the organization has high risks, then it makes sense to have internal audit so that they can constantly review, check, and give assurance to the board. Number of employees, so if we have high number of employees, again, it denotes size. This one is nice, geographical dispersion. So if we have a lot of scattered offices, scattered branches or scattered countries or cities, it makes sense to have internal audit so that they can visit, they can audit all the locations and give us assurance. Centralized or decentralized, again, linked to the first point, like uh, the point above, if it's decentralized, the risks are higher, so um, we may have internal audit. Quality of the system and internal control. So if our systems and controls are weaker, then we have a strong uh, justification to have internal audit. High frequency of errors or breaches or fraud. And then if you know the, the frequency is high of errors, and non-compliance and issues and frauds and this, then that means we need internal audit. And of course, in the last cost benefit considerations as well, because internal audit, they don't bring any revenue. They don't add any incremental revenue, but they are cost. So th these are the benefits, but these are all intangible benefits, right? So all these considerations based on this, we can recommend or not recommend having a internal audit. Audit committee, we already discussed. Oof. What else is left? Articles, uh, there are four articles. Okay, uh, let me... Um, cover the articles, then we might take a small break for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Is that okay? No, don't want a break. Okay. Okay, let us reach to a certain level and then I will give away. Technical articles. So there has been no new technical article up till today. So I checked today afternoon. No new article has been published for SPF. Does anyone happen to know any article? No, right? So, so far, whatever articles were published have been tested. Only two articles have not yet been tested. Wait, guys, I will give a break in 10 minutes. Stop. Only two uh, things have not been tested. One is AI, robotics, and machine learning. And the other one is called four lines of defense. Honestly, my opinion is I will not, uh, I don't expect questions from these two. Why? Because these are old articles now. Normally what happens is the examiner, they test 
the latest articles. So if it is published this month or last month, you should expect the question. These articles were published like eight, nine, 10 months back. Two papers have already happened after that and nothing on robotics, AIs, or four line of defense. So, uh, no, Ursula. So to cut the long story short, uh, you know, it's not important. These are outdated articles now, but if you want, you can go through these. I'm not, I'll not spend time because I want to spend more time on the case studies now. You can easily go through these pointers, okay? Very, very simple. If you want, um, it's not difficult and it's not important as well. Ananya? Fazil? AI and robotics was tested last time. Last time means? In the March attempt. And would you remember the question? So it was not in my question. It was in the morning batch I gave in the afternoon batch. So, so you haven't was, seen it? Yeah, I haven't seen it. But, you know, the people who gave exam in the morning told me that they had questions on AI and robotics. So why no one else in this 156 group is speaking about that? Ahmed, any idea? Uh, sir, I have another another point. Let's finish. Okay, wait. So Ananya, yeah, yeah, if that's good news, if that's tested, it's out of the way now. Uh, Fazil? Uh, sir, what type of question will appear in the exam on these five? It's related to, we have to relate with the scenario or it's a general question. General question in SBL? Are you crazy? No, I mean that we have to just use a company name and this and that or we have to just copy so paste. They might, they might say uh, the question on AI could be that the company was, is thinking of implementing AI. Okay. And you might be asked to evaluate the option. Okay. And when okay. we, what do we do uh, when the question says evaluate or assess? Uh, both pros and cons. Yes, pros and cons. So you should be familiar with three, four advantages and three, four disadvantages of AI, which is, which is you know mentioned here in the notes. Uh, advantages it's faster it's accurate less errors 24 7 less dependency on employees but then there are risks and issues and disadvantages you just remember this list okay okay thank you uh who else is there uh ananya why your hand is up all the time i have a uh, one more question so it's asked question on you know that uh, four lines of defense how will they put out the question i have no idea on that it will be a straightforward thing that must be mentioned four line of defense somewhere in the requirement okay, sir. Yeah. i really don't expect that okay, okay. Uh, ahmed okay sir uh, i have googled latest uh, technical articles acca and there is some articles has come up for uh, SBL. Okay. I don't know if this is older. I will share you the, the level. I've gone through it. These are all old, old articles. Do you see any dates? Uh, no. I've checked, I've checked the entire list. Okay. I also did the same thing. Nothing new. Oh, thanks. Okay, just lower your hand. All right, so we are done with four lines of defense. Let's go through it. Exam techniques. Um, I don't want to talk about exam techniques because all my regular batches, we did extensive practice with these, right? During our four mocks and three case studies, we applied that. Professional skills, uh, we all know what to do now. But, um, uh, these are the various formats, report, section of a report, briefing paper, email, slides, letter, press release, business case, PID, weakness, risk. We've all done this except for business case, which has not yet been properly tested. So I hope that you are familiar. 
all the formats are also mentioned here so, but i know that you are very very hands-on with the formats now okay right so here we end the top 25 it's a very important document all of you must be hands-on on this document top 25 topics exam techniques format professional skills all there in very short summarized manner tomorrow on sunday tomorrow is sunday at least spend three hours eating and sucking this document it should be inside you okay without this you will be handicapped no arsala no i already answered that okay john business case format is given in that all right so now let's take a small break and then i want to recap all the case studies we did okay so we will go one by one we will open each case study we will go through the list of requirements and we will try to recall retain memorize suck it in whatever you words you like to try to memorize those answers so that if something is repeated, we are able to handle. Um, it is, uh, uh, let me give, uh, I need to say my prayers, so 15 minutes break. It is uh, 9.41, so let's say it's Pakistan, it will be 10.40 to 10.55. Okay, let's say 11 p.m. sharp, I will start. 11 p.m. sharp means 11 p.m. sharp. See you after 20 minutes.
Hi guys, uh, are you back? Ready? Okay, now, so the, now our plan is to just quickly go through all the past papers we have attempted, okay? Uh, so that we can consolidate our knowledge in one sitting. You can see a pattern, you can see some repetition, right? And we can memorize, we can digest the things in, and, you know, in one go. Um, those of you who have not attended this session or this paper with me, you might struggle a bit. So please just observe, okay? Uh, I will not in, go into details, explanations, but those of you who have attended these papers with me, they will know, understand what I'm saying, all right? So just uh, others, they just observe. Uh, I would appreciate if you don't ask questions which are like very basic, very elementary, which shows that you have no grip over the scenario. I wouldn't be able to respond to that because of the time constraints. I hope you understand, but definitely you will benefit from the discussion. Right, guys, I want your Word documents to be ready. So the first question we was September 2018. This is the first ever SBL question. It was called COFOL Construction, a listed company. Okay, let's look at the requirements. It says, prepare a briefing paper for the board meeting, which analyzes the financial and non-financial issues, which will affect the final decision whether to accept the contract to build the road in detail. 18 plus four is 22 marks divided by two is 11 points and if there's a financial involved maybe 12 to 13 points correct now this question were required us to identify financial issues as well as non-financial issues relating to the beetle contract so this was a very specific question relating to very specific exhibits all right nothing to do with syllabus so we can skip that you can see question number 1a was not general but common sense right 1b discuss the difficulty cc may face in fulfilling the criteria stated by desmond the transport minister again a very specific question no syllabus knowledge required you just need to read the criteria uh, stated by the decement, the transport minister, and identify or discuss the challenges which you can pick up. Again, a common sense question. Okay. So nothing uh, to be done in these one. Question number two, prepare a memo addressed to Oliver, which critically evaluates the outline contents and the summary of operational issues in the project initiation document which he has prepared and recommend improvements so 14 how many points 14 plus 4 is 18 divide by 4 marks because there's a recommendation required four to five points okay you can use a tabular format if you want so the topic is project initiation document. And uh, all, uh, uh, already in, uh, a, a PID has been given to you in one of the exhibits and you are supposed to critically evaluate the shortcomings. Right. So do you remember the contents of a PID? Do you guys remember the contents of a PID? If you don't know the contents, this question is gone. So the contents of a PID are very straightforward. Uh, scope and objective should be there. Cost benefit analysis should be there. Uh, key stakeholders should be there like 
project sponsor, project manager, project team, um, the, the concerned departments, external customers, suppliers, government, society. Other than that, project duration or timeline should be there. Major risks should be there. Major constraints should be there. Major assumptions should be there. Project monitoring and governance procedure should be there. So if you know the list, this question is very easy. Question number three is prepare a confidential memo which discusses the ethical and reputational concerns raised at the meeting. Ethical and reputational concerns raised at the meeting. So there is a meeting, there is an exhibit which was provided about some emergency meeting. So all you need to do is read that exhibit and identify ethical and reputational concerns. When we say ethical concerns, ethical talks about, you know, employees, um, uh, professional code of ethics, uh, uh, social footprints, commercial. Ethical is a wide topic. You can talk about employees, customers, suppliers, society. Even you can talk about uh, bribery, honesty, you know, frauds, all those things. But a lot of information was available in the exhibit. Again, a common sense question. Nothing, no directly linked with your syllabus or technical knowledge. Prepare a summary to review, assess the control weaknesses discussed at the emergency meeting and recommend. So again, at the, in the same exhibit, some control weaknesses uh, you need to read. If you remember, there were control weaknesses like lack of lighting, oil spillage, uh, the health and safety manager was sick for last six weeks. Very common sense weakness. Again, nothing to do with syllabus. How many points here? 14 plus four is 18 divided by four, four to five weaknesses. When we will explain the weaknesses, you will also need to explain the impact, right? Nothing goes without impact. So weakness, when you say it's a weakness, what's the impact? What's the, you know, disadvantage to the organization of, because of that and then the recommendation again a straightforward thing now one three c a briefing paper for advising the board of the advantages of establishing a separate risk committee what can be the advantages of establishing a separate risk committee? Please type in the chat box. Yes, more focused, more specialized, more time. Both can give more time to other matters, higher involvement of NEDs, higher shareholders' confidence. You see, suddenly it is cracking up, it's becoming easier. All you, if you know these headings, give these headings and then link with the scenario. You see, very nice. Now, question number four, discuss the benefits and cost of investing in big data. Please type on your Word document, benefits and cost, give me um two or three benefits and one to two cost of cost means the disadvantage of big data analytics type on your word document what are the advantages of big data analytics type on the word document Don't you understand? I'm saying type on the Word document. Yeah. 
Mavish, can you please stop writing here? Or shall I push you out of the class? I'm not writing anything. So you are I not the someone, only Mavish. There's some other Mavish memo. I don't know. Someone is writing from my name. Mavish Mahmood is someone else? Yes, sir. He's I writing don't... continuously. I don't know yeah. why. So, uh, there are two Mavish. I will throw her out. Don't worry. Yes, sir. I don't know why. It's okay. You are being hacked. Okay, what are the advantages of big data? Here, deeper insight into the data, which will of course help us in better marketing strategies, better pricing strategies. It can improve, improve customer service. It will increase our comp edge. We can develop you know, new products, additional new sources of revenue. Just you need to remember this. And then you can pick two or three which relates to the exhibit or which relates to this scenario because you can't go general right but the first thing is you must remember this what are the cost of big data data storage that's the big cost data storage is a big cost another cost is making the data security the it infrastructure you need large servers so data storage data security are huge costs which are involved this short, simple thing was tested, but of course, in context of the scenario. Okay. Done, this paper is over. How much was common sense? I think more than 50% was common sense. Only big data was theoretical in the sense that you need certain knowledge or technical knowledge. Uh, advantages of risk committee was uh, technical knowledge was required. But other than that, most of them were identified the weakness, identified the ethical concerns. PID was also, yeah, PID you needed technical knowledge. Yes, correct. Now, let me close this paper. The next question we did was highlight. Yeah, this one. Highlight question was basically, let's look at the requirement. The chief business analyst, blah, blah, prepare briefing notes, consider, blah, 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 discuss the key factors which have enabled Highlight to be successful in its home country. Interesting question. They want us to discuss the key factors which have enabled Highlight to be successful. So Highlight was very successful in its home country. So they want to understand what are the reasons behind their success. Now you can simplify this question, success factors, key success factors, key factors of success. You, can we break the success factors into two broad headings, external factors, internal factors. For example, um, if the economy is doing good, obviously all company will perform. If the political environment is good, obviously all company will perform. You see the external factors. And then there are internal factors like human resource, financial resource, IT brand. So please, Ah, no Porter diamonds. You, the moment you get stuck in a model, you are screwed and I'm so happy. Crazy, man, crazy. Bilal, I think you are a new student. Yeah. 
you don't worry is a new guy so these new guys have not studied from me all right so um external factors success uh, factors can be external factors like political economy social technological ecological legal what else can come under external factors pastel and otter five both can come right political economy social technological legal and then customers the industry as well the industry if the industry is growing demand customers suppliers competitors yes so depending on the availability of the information external factors you can have five four five headings what about internal factors what is this happening uh, varda who is this guy i thought so because that was a very strange comment uh, from your varda who is this guy hang on Can you name continuously? Yes, he's he's gone now. Yes, sir. He's doing it. Bastard. What the fuck is happening? I have zero tolerance for these kind of things, guys. Yeah, I think Imari is gone now. He's vanished. Who was this guy, Imar? Can you uh, let me know his name? He's no more there, I think. But do you remember his full name? I would have him checked out. Banu, uh, he messaged you as well on WhatsApp or what? Imar Kent. I will have him. Imar Kent. Okay, after the class. Okay, after the class, I will check. He was me messaged yesterday. That means he's from a newer batch. Fucking pervert. I'll take some actions, guys. Sorry for that. All right, guys. Hit this. discuss the key factors so internal factors what can be that uh, what can be internal factors examples of internal factors give me four very good farzana human resource financial resources it brand brand means marketing okay remember all this huh external factors is political economic social techno eco legal customer suppliers competition internal is human resource financial resource it brand ratta lagao just memorize it no need for porter diamond okay now using the fact sheet referred to above or any other relevant information prepare a report for the finance director which evaluates the proposal to acquire comfy stay hotel proposal to acquire comfy stay hotel what do you think sfa how many things under suitability how many paragraph for suitability which one under suitability which one home country yeah target country target company very good what are the three paragraphs for feasibility human resource financial resource it slash brand very good what are the three paragraphs for acceptability shareholder acceptance cultural differences financial projections very nice i am very glad you guys are now into the speed 
Right. So is there a financial projection is given? Um, ah, here is the financial projections. Here is the financial projection. So what, how do you check financial projections? Let me know the five point checklist. Starting from the top, yeah, DCF, payback, major assumptions, tax, sensitivity. Very good. Is this based on DCF? Please check. Yeah, I can see discount factor and NPV and year zero to six. Is it based on DCF? Yes, Halas, ignore. Payback, can we calculate payback? Yeah, based on this cash flow, you can calculate payback. 90 million is the outflow, 18 plus 24, 34, 44, 42, 52, 62, 72, 69. 69, 79, 88, 89, 99, 96. So it's 96. So it's between year three and four. So let's say 3.5 years is the payback. Very good. Major assumptions. Look at revenues. Look at revenues. Does it make sense? Constant, constant, increase, constant, constant, constant. Initial investments. Big amount, 80 million, very material. Operating cost, constant, constant. So bigger, big amounts are, so you challenge these points. Challenge these points. What is this? Why is it constant? What is the basis? Okay. Tax, do you see tax? Have they considered tax? No tax. So you will ask why no tax has been considered. And then uh, one paragraph or one, two lines on sensitivity. Five points checklist. Okay. All right, move on. You see, now it's easier, faster. Question number 2A. Prepare a draft press release responding to the criticism. Responding to the criticisms, assessing the social and environmental impact. So there was some criticism in an exhibit. So it's a very specific question that you need to respond to the criticisms relating to social and environmental. What does social include? Give me a list of social. Four things in, are included in social. What are the things included in social? Employees, customers, suppliers, society. Very good. And what are the things included in environmental? Pollution, recycling, carbon, scarce resources, right? The standard word, sexy buzzwords. Very good. So you will see, in, you will find information about this in the exhibits. Just put it together. Okay. Okay, question number 2B. Assess the role and benefits of integrated reporting. Okay. Assess the role and benefit of integrated reporting. <laughs> what is the role of integrated reporting? I think there was a definition. Uh, what is the, the, there's some definition about integrated role here. So you might need to um, kind of memorize this definition, what is a integrated reporting? An integrated reporting is a concise document demonstrating the link between blah, 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 and showing, you might need to memorize this, okay? What is the role or definition? And what is the other question on this? Um, what are the benefits of integrated reporting? Tell me, tell me, what are the benefits? 
more future remember the differences financials more it is voluntary it is a voluntary disclosure so it uh, enhances the reputation it covers it focuses on wider stakeholders it focuses on social and environmental initiatives it is more futuristic um, it covers six capitals rather than one capital it may we may attract capital at a lower cost more effective communication with the stakeholders very good comp edge yes very nice but of course these can be your headings like the advantages but then the advantages need to be drafted in context with the exhibit or the scenario huh? but at least you must know the headings headings don't change the wordings change easy question number three discuss the potential challenges uh, of the disruptive technologies which are emerging in the hotel industry and highlight potential application or recommendation what is a disruptive technology it was not it is not in my top 25 it was a surprise topic a disruptive technology is basically uh, <clears throat> this guy is it uh, is a technology which is changing the conventional way of business right like uber like netflix like crypto they are challenging or disturbing the traditional or the conventional thing so every industry have their own disruptive technologies medicine has their own financial markets has their own disruptive technology Hoteling industry has their own disruptive technologies. So you read the exhibit here. It, this there is one specific exhibit given in the scenario, where they have discussed what are the disruptive technologies affecting hotel industry. And from there you start picking up, start discussing the impact, and then suggest them some solutions. Okay. So all you need to know is just know the word, know the meaning of the word disruptive technology. Rest, everything is case driven. What about this one? Mm. Assessing the potential outcome of each of the each of the IT system risks and give recommendations. So it is something to do with IT risk question again it was mentioned in an exhibit three risks were mentioned in the exhibit three it related risks were mentioned you are supposed to talk about it um, and give recommendations very specific exhibit related question okay done The third paper was uh, smartware. You remember smartware? Smartware, question number one. Analyze the environment in which smartware operates. Which environment? It is silent. Is it both country as well as uh, industry or country or industry i don't know environment is a very open word but if you read here in the preamble now tell me which in model which environment you need to speak about Kalas, pastel very good very good you will talk about political economy social techno eco legal whatever is available there were certain statistics given like inflation like growth like unemployment whenever any statistics is given 
please refer to mention those stats in your answer. Okay, Pestel. Second one, assess the major risk presented by the smartware model and suggest actions. Major risks, from where you will get, identify the major risks. Do you remember the list of 10, 15 risks? Where you will get the list from? No, Bhanu, what are you saying? Yes, you remember the, the list of major risks? Okay, mention all the risks. Please type risks. I'm watching. Can you also guys talk about non-financial risk? Everybody's talking about credit risk, financial risk. Very good, political risk, reputational risk, health and safety risk, operational risk, competition risk, technology risks, business risk, strategic risk, financial risk, currency risks, reputational risk, intellectual risk, legal risks, very good. So from this list, you can, if you know these lists, you can, when you are reading the exhibit, you can, identify which one to pick. Yes. Someone who is muted or unmuted, who's that? What What's happening, Ananya? Why are you unmuted? Sir, I have a question, sir. Sir, uh, what is property risk? Property risk, I honestly don't know. Can you Google please, Ananya, and let us know? Okay. I'm waiting. So like fraud, bribery, unethical activities. Got it. Yeah. The risk, property risk is the risk of fraud or bribery or unethical activity conducted by any of my employees. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys. So this was an easy question. Provided that you are able to identify from the scenario and you have to give a name, a heading, like is it a business risk? Is this a technology risk, reputational risk, financial risk, strategic risk? Heading would be like that. Question number 2A, analyze the company's strategic position. Why smartware appears to be so this word is very confusing. You remember the, in the top 25, there's a topic called analyze the strategic position in which we have to cover pastel, porter, internal factors. But I told you that's a lengthy one and at least 15, 18 marks, otherwise something else. Look at the marks here. So that means it is not that strategic position. So here do we just, need to compare uh, I think Southland with Noria. There's an exhibit which gives information about both countries. We just need to compare and comment. Okay, again, a relatively exhibit based question. Not a lot of technical requirement uh, knowledge is required. Evaluate the strategic and ethical implications of the planned shop closures. Very interesting question. These guys are planning to close their some of their outlets, like turn 20, 30% of their outlets. What can be ethical implications? Ethical talks about staffing, employees, customers, suppliers, society. So if we close down one third of our shops, what will happen to the employees? 
the redundancy, right? We will have to let them go. That's an ethical thing. We are making them jobless. What happens to the customers in those cities or areas where we are closing the shops? They will not be able to access our products. Loss of customer, yeah. What happens to our suppliers if we close 30% of our shops? Who will go out of business? Are you crazy? <laughs> no, they will not go out of business. They are just, <laughs> uh, but you know, of course, if our 30% shops are closed, our number of orders will reduce and suppliers order size will reduce, which is loss of revenue for them as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ethical. And strategic matters will look about, you know, legal complications, uh, exit barriers, uh, legal commitments, uh, you know, all those logical things. Reputational risk, yeah. Maybe the competitors might spread it in a neck. Wrong signal can be, you know, cost heavy redundancy cost, cash flow requirements. Yeah. So remember this. Huh? This was a tricky topic. Now, if you get a question on ethical and strategic implications of shop closure or partial shutdown or divestment, it's called divestment, partial divestment. Ethical will be employees, customers, suppliers, and so and strategic would be logical things like reputational, legal, exit barriers, all those things. Okay, you will remember that. You will remember now. Yes, Laiba. Uh, sir, if it comes about the partial divestment, then same will apply. Yes. Just partially. These are, yeah. So this okay. they are closing thirty percent of their shop, it is partial divestment, right? Mm, okay. Okay. Three, evaluate the effectiveness of internal control system at the company, particularly on the procurement side and recommend. Very specific uh, exhibit driven question. Um, there's an exhibit in which all the weaknesses are there. You identify them, you talk about their impact, and then you give recommendation how it can be improved. Describe the benefit of introducing a customer database management system, including a loyalty scheme. I have no idea, customer database management system, maybe something similar to CRM, I don't know. But if we have proper customer database management system, we'll be able to organize our customers, I analyze our customers, we can do better marketing, we can communicate. I'm just thinking very general things. Better communication, we can manage them better. Uh, we understand their need, feedbacks, complaints, loyalty scheme. You know, we can engage more with our customers if we have a whatever customer database. And ultimately increase revenue, right? Okay, this was out of the blue. Evaluate the NPV analysis. Again, it is a projection cash flow projection question, five point checklist will come here. Same thing, right? Last question. Discuss the benefits of integrated thinking. What the hell is integrated thinking? I forgot. Integrated thinking. Same way, yeah. yeah. What are the benefits? more reputation because it's voluntary, more transparency, more focused on stakeholders, effective communication, more futuristic, more focused on social and environmental, can attract capital at lower cost. <laughs> How corporate reporting Prepare, allow him to address the wider finance, how corporate reporting using favor, more relevant information, I don't know what. But what is left, I told you there are three things in IR. 
Remember, what are the three things in IR? The differences between conventional statements and IR, the uh, six capitals and the advantages. So the advantages we already talked in part A. So what's left? The differences between conventional and IR and a little bit of six capitals. So you can talk about those two under part B. Okay. The differences and the capital, because always IR has three things differences, six capital, and advantages. It's a 16 mark question on IR, so all three will be tested, right? So one component was tested in part A, so the remaining two put it in part B and then leave it for the rest, like hope for the rest. Akshay, that's what I'm saying. There is no key to understand. Just talk about six capital, talk about the differences, move on. Something might click, okay? Eight points, yeah, in total. All right, guys, so done with this bit. Rules. So this was a interesting question. The sales director asks you to provide a set of notes, provide you provide a set of notes to accompany the presentation he has prepared, which discusses how the sales development strategies he has proposed will assist those in achieving the strategic. So the sales director has made a presentation in in which he has mentioned some bullets about sales development strategies. All you need to do is make the accompanying notes, which simply means that you explain those bullets in a little bit more detail. Okay, very specific exhibit driven question. Analyze the financial and non-financial implication of those prioritizing one order over other and recommend which one is better. So again, it was a very surprise question. It involved uh, uh, you know, uh, some financial calculations. Uh, there, there was some um, labor constraint Okay, there was, they had uh, some less number of hours. There were more orders between, so they had to decide what to do. So this is a calculation based question. Uh, you should be familiar, limiting factor. Yeah, the topic is limiting factor. Okay, so I suggest that you watch the video. If you are not clear, then you watch the video on DULS, okay, in which I, was, I did this question. So you can understand that better. Analyze how risks identified in the register could have an impact <laughs> and recommend mitigation. Very straightforward. Some risks have been identified. A risk register has been provided. Some risks have been identified and you're supposed to talk about the impact of those risks and then recommend solutions. Pretty straightforward. Three presentation slides. Again, a very strange question. Identify uh, how each risk response suggested by the three directors would be categorized using an appropriate risk management framework. This is Tara model. huh? This is, you know, this one is general, like this one is okay, but this one is four marks is Tara model. Weird question. Question number three, evaluate the extent to which the criteria for achieving performance excellence are met by DULS 
using the brainstorming meeting. So again, uh, some criteria have been given to you for performance excellence. It, it looked like a scary exhibit. So this is the criteria which was given to you, performance excellence criteria. Five criteria were mentioned. This one, one, two, three, four, and five. So you need to talk about these five criteria in the context of the scenario, okay? No model, no nothing. These are the five performance criteria. You need to talk about it, whether we are achieving it or we are not achieving it. Yeah, based on actual performance, correct. I'm sure what is the professional skills? I think it must be evaluation skills because both pros and cons. I, but I'm not sure. Yeah, evaluation skills. So whatever we are achieving is good. Whatever we are not achieving is bad. So automatically pros and cons. 16 plus 420, 10 points, yeah. Okay, done with those. It for you, I don't want to talk about it. It's a very complicated question. BCO, very nice question. This was the first question which was based on a charitable organization. Yeah, Dulce was risk focused. Explain the specific nature of principal agent relationship in a charitable organization principal agent relations who is a principal in the charitable organization do you remember yesterday's lecture no who's saying beauty fuck man principal in a charitable organization founding member idiots founding members and sponsors Who's saying shareholder? Shit, man. God help you. In a charitable organization, the principal is founding family or founding members or sponsors or major donors. No Ashanti. Why you say only? Founding member is the first one. Advantages of having a two-tier board. What are the advantages of two-tier board? Oh, okay, Shanti, got it. Segregation of duty, uh, monitoring like the higher dependence on NED, increase shareholders' confidence. Independence, right. Assess the financial and non-financial performance in the latest financial year. You have been given a financial exhibit. There's a PL provided to you. You just need to identify the major variances, material variances, identify, investigate the reasons. You see the professional skills is analysis. Analysis means investigate the reasons of variances, the reasons of the root causes. It was a good question. Uh, top five, yeah, Arun, it all depends on the marks. But top five material amounts in terms of amounts, not in terms of percentage, okay? Evaluate the extent to which the external environment could improve Back BCO's objective, external environment. It doesn't say general or whatever. So external environment means which models? Both? Yes. So is the marks heavy? How much is the question for marks? Oh, 19 marks. Yeah, then it makes sense. It's both because pastel and porter together, put together is worth 18, 19 marks. Yeah. 10 marks each or eight marks each. So both you need to cover here. Again, if any information for any factor is missing, then you just skip that. Whatever is available, you talk about it, okay? 
three slides uh, uh, about three applications of IT that could enhance its e-business. So how these guys could improve their e-business, what they can do, they, they can improve their websites, they can have mobile apps, they can do social uh, presence in social marketing, they can use uh, the uh, online training softwares, all those, it's already given, right? Social marketing, websites, emails, uh, digital marketing, uh, apps. Apps is very important, guys. Whenever any question says, how can we improve our e-business? Apps, very important. If they have a website, they should have an app as well, okay? Because you remember the advantages of apps? Yeah, SEO, okay. All right. Evaluate the current risk register and the adequacy of each of the risk mitigating. Again, it's a very risk register focused question. A risk register has been provided to you. You are supposed to talk about the adequacy of the risk register and the, and the adequacy of the recommendations. Exhibit based. Now it, it seems easy, right? When we are revising all the questions in one go, we can see a pattern that is not that difficult. It's exhibit based. Okay, is it important for BCOs, board of trustees to have sufficient mix of skills and diversity? Absolutely, yes. Both should have a variety of skills, correct? Skills means uh, marketing and IT and finance and business and technical. Diversity, diversity is also important in the board. Gender diversity, age diversity, ethnic diversity, professional diversity. And what is the importance of continuous professional development of the board? Of course, continuous professional development or training is very important. It will make sure that the directors are up to date with the latest things. Um, any change in legislation, any change in this, any new technology, they're up to date. They'll be able to perform their, perform their duties better. Um, they will come up with strategies which are latest so that the organization can benefit. So obviously, uh, it's always important that the board is up to date. So in total, like uh, seven points between one and two. So you can talk more about in more in one and just give two points in part two. There's no split. Very nice, very nice. Done. BCO is done. NCCP, very dangerous question. NCCP. First question Assess NCCP's internal and external stakeholders and recommend appropriate. So, internal stakeholders. Please let me know who are the top two, three internal stakeholders, examples, employees, board of trustees, board of directors, employees, yeah, volunteers. Who can be external stakeholders generally? Customers, suppliers, society, government, community okay but of course when you are answering this you have to identify the stakeholders in light of this scenario or this case study wait Mavish. and then stakeholder management is a model it is mandelo stakeholder model do you remember can you please type the four things what are the four categories through in which we can handle our stakeholders? Please type. Key players, keep informed, keep satisfied, minimal effort. 
Very good. Now, can you give me examples, key players? Who can fit into key players? Key players can include board of trustees and major shareholders. Right. Not shareholders, major shareholders. Keep satisfied generally includes who? Keep satisfied government and major customers or major donors in this scenario. Government, major customers in general, and in this scenario, because it's charitable, we don't have customers, you will say major donors, keep satisfied. Keep informed, employees, volunteers, community, individual customers, small investors, media, whatever, yeah, minimal effort, very small investors, I don't know, <laughs> okay, participants, no man, participants are our customers, right, they pay us money, how can they, you do minimal effort on participants, that, Yes, Mahavish, dear. I didn't raise my hand. Again, that bugger is here? No, sir. Who was raising the hand? Okay, anyways. All right. Total 10 points, uh, I don't know. How many points are required? Um, 16 plus four is 20. And we will divide by three probably or three or four. Why? Because there are two parts. We have to assess and recommend. So either divide by four or divide by three, depending how much you can write. If you divide by four, then how much points? five stakeholders if you divide by three then six so okay five to six stakeholders critically assess nccp's sources of competitive advantage what is the meaning of sources of competitive advantage please type sources of comp advantage internal factors sources of comp advantage is another name of internal factors and what is included in internal factors human resource financial resource it and brand you see reputation now the word here is critically assess which means what critically assess means you have to identify the negative points the cons however the professional skills is evaluation so that means you have to also consider few, not a lot, few positive points. So majority will be negative points, but you have to include one or two positive points in order to score evaluation. Okay, is this clear? Okay. Uh, evaluate the board's approach to risk management. Is this a risk register question? No, it is now, it's a wider question. It says approach to the entire risk management process and recommend. So then, when then, then the entire thing kicks in. Commitment from top management, then they should have risk committees, they should analyze the risk, likelihood, probability, prioritize, they should have risk register, they should have staff training, they should have follow-ups, all those things. 12 plus 3, 15 marks, divide by 4, uh, 4 to 5 points. All right. Easy? Yes, someone wants to ask something? Anyone has a question? Right, so in risk management, I had said there are three possible types of questions. One can be identify the main risk. We saw one question on that. 
one can be risk register we saw two questions on risk register in your paper and one could be evaluate the overall risk management process here is that question yes ananya um so my question is like uh, so far we have not got a, an exact question with respect to audit if they examine like how will they examine which audit about you know uh, the internal audit stuff which you mentioned today that it is important internal audit there could be two possible questions what are the advantages or role or advantages of internal audit and the other one would be that maybe the organization doesn't have internal audit and they are thinking of whether we should you know create an internal audit or not so they are asking you to assess whether they need so that those factors mm -hmm. uh, that's it okay thank you okay guys uh, good one identify the external stakeholders with an interest in the internal controls again a very uh, exhibit driven question very case driven question the government will be interested in internal controls because they are providing grants they want to make sure their conditions are being met the donors will be interested in internal controls because they are giving donations they want to make sure that their donation is spent wisely uh, they want some assurance that the donation is not misappropriated or misused the participants who are paying fees they are interested in the internal controls why because maybe their personal data is uh, credit card details all those things are stored in our systems so they want their data to be secure and private you know the community might be interested in internal control so that they want that there's transparency the organization is working professionally very very you know uh, exhibit driven thing yes deepa deepa your hand sir. Up. yes sir. i want to ask about this um, i know a external um, ex stakeholder is our council about uh, about that in CPEG case based link, but apart from council, I know it's a government, but apart from council, can governor, government regulators like a tax regulators can be uh, interested? Yes, no, no, in key player, uh, uh, keep satisfied. Not the uh, like in an internal control, would they be interested in internal control? Oh, okay, yeah, why not? Of course, like a tax because uh, normally charities don't pay tax. Okay. No. okay they might yeah but yeah the tax authority might be interested why not okay thank you sir Navish, is that you no sir i don't know your account is hacked i don't know this did you see your hands were up no sir no, you I didn't. didn't see I can see you, yeah. Okay, Dipti, you are unmuted. Okay. Your voice is very low. Come, okay. All right. Yes, Ridwan. Sorry, I, I didn't raise my hand. Sorry. What's happening? Seriously? <laughs> Some ghost is in the Zoom now. No, there is just one name with Mavish, not two names. That's what I'm checking. Yeah, I mean... He's changing the uh, name regularly. He's just changing the name. I'll find out. I told him that we have audit trails, right? I must have. All right. Question number three. Assess the viability of the current range of courses. Very exhibit driven. No technical knowledge required. Evaluate the CEO's proposal. 
So again, you know, if you remember this question, you just read the proposal and then you identify the plus points, the minus points, it's skepticism. So you will disagree, you will challenge, you can ask questions, exhibit related question. Need for, explain the need for cybersecurity and recommend actions for cybersecurity. Please, guys, I need you to type. Explain the need for cybersecurity. Please type why cybersecurity is important. Why is it needed? I need four to five points. Very good. Operational disruptions, reputational risk, loss of customers, loss of revenue, uh, regulatory fines, uh, legal complications, and worst scenario, business continuity or uh, business shutdown, business closure. All right. Going concern, yes. Recommend cyber security actions. I need five. Focus more on data side and less on hardware side. Firewalls, very good. Passwords, very good. Antivirus, very good. Audit trails. Password includes all those things like OTPs and regular changing, backups. And one point on physical security server security, CCTVs or security guards, biometrics. Okay, perfect. So this was a high scoring question. Eh? And again, uh, in this case, uh, the operational director, uh, you know, wants to one guy is the sponsor as well as the project manager. Is that a good strategy that the same guy is the project sponsor and the same guy is the project manager? So why it should be split? What's the advantage? So yeah, it's number one, segregation of duty. And then project manager requires technical skills, the two different roles, right? And then monitoring of the project with this more, yeah. I think uh, you know all this. We did that yesterday, I think, right? So it's pretty fresh in our mind. Uh, last question, Optima. Prepare a briefing, assess the value to Optima of undertaking customer segmentation analysis. So this was a surprise topic, but you know, uh, there was an article on customer segmentation in that attempt and this question was there. So it was expected. What is the meaning of customer segmentation? that we break down our customers, not market segmentation, excuse me. Market segmentation is different. When we break the market into sections. Customer segmentation, when we break our customers into groups. For example, I have like 150 students right now. All of you are attending right now. I can break you into smaller groups. I can do a geographical segmentation, like how many from Europe, how many from Africa, how many India, how many Pakistan, how many Middle East. I can do uh, gender, gender. Age might not be uh, very good here because most of you, 90% of you in the same age. Gender could be done. What about number of attempts? 
Nena? Yeah, number of attempts, first attempt or number of papers left. How about, <laughs> yes, scary. How about language? Asad, what are you doing? So about language, like whose mother, first primary language is English, whose is uh, working versus working versus full-time students. You see, it's all logical things. Very good. So customer segmentation means that we break our customers into various segments. Now, why do we break it? What is the advantages? When we break our customers into specific groups, what happens? Very good. No, don't jump to marketing directly. Very bad. We then understand their specific requirements and needs. This is not a, a you know one size fits all. When I break it, I'm then able to focus on each segment. I can understand their needs. I once I know their needs. I can design, offer them pro customized products. I can then I can do marketing. I can I can increase their customer satisfaction, which will increase more revenue, better retention, better communication, better customer engagement. All these sexy words comes in. Comp edge, yes, thank you. Cost, huh? accounted. Got it. So now this question was assess the value to optima. What is the meaning of this? Assess the value to optima of undertaking customer value. Advantages or what value will it add, right? Benefits, yes. So got it? What is the benefit of customer segmentation? We will be able to understand the specific needs. We can develop products. Uh, we can do specific marketing, personalized marketing, increase customer satisfaction, increase revenue, comp edge. So many things. Remember this now. And part B is advise on the most appropriate ways that Optima could segment its customer. How Optima can segment its customers are very simple. The most easiest common way is geographical gender, age, needs, but this was a specific uh, case study uh, exhibit specific requirement, right? Mm. B. Prepare two slides where we explain the why it is of strategic importance to Optima to demonstrate a strong focus on CSR. Now, what the hell is CSR? Corporate social responsibility, which means that organizations they involve in charitable activities, social activities, or the betterment of the society, which means that they are you know, contributing in the social welfare of the society. Is that good? In today's days, it's good. It's a very strong marketing tool because many customers, they are now very focused on these things. They like to do deal, buy products of those companies who are socially active, who are good cit corporate citizens. So why, what will be the advantage uh, to Optima for doing CSR from a customer point of view? Will it get more customers? Yes, especially those customers who really value these CSR activities, you will be able to attract them. It will give you comp edge over other companies who are not involving in CSR. So definitely we will be able to attract more customers quality customers who are more, you know, affected or interested in CSR active. Will it, uh, how will it benefit from a staffing point of view? 
how will optima benefit from a staffing point of view again same thing yes a we will be able to attract good resources because we will be seen as a good employer and it will boost up the morale of the staff they will feel proud that they are associated with a company which is in csr motivated low staff turnover very good aisha attract better talent very good perfect ho gaya par and how the investors and government and wider community sees will see us if if like if we are csr what benefit will we get from investors low cost of capital investors will be we are more you, you know if we have a good reputation ethical company we'll be able to attract more investors maybe at a lower cost government relationship maybe we will get the be fit program it is another exhibit you know it will strengthen our relationship with government it will um, wider community again uh, you know it will be you know a goodwill thing we may attract more customers more volunteers maybe i don't know so it was a very general common sense point relating to csr <laughs> Okay, analyze the potential opportunities and threats which Optima must consider in relation to undertaking a collaboration partnership with the Department of Health for the BFIT program. So opportunities and threats of this program. So very specific exhibit specific requirements. So explain what is meant by value for money and evaluate the potential challenges value for money is a concept again a very unexpected topic it's a concept which is used by government organizations and charitable organizations they have to demonstrate that whatever they are spending is justified and it's adding value so value for money there are three components remember what components are there there are three e's value for money is based on three e's effectiveness efficiency economy effectiveness efficiency economy very specific topic effectiveness means that how well you are achieving your objectives efficiency means that you're really efficient with with less number of input but you are able to achieve large number of output and economy means that you are within the budget economy talks about budget cost budget revenue budget time budget resources budget whatever budget you are within the approved budget you do not exceed or cross your budget limits okay very very strange question actually but now you must remember yes donald Hey, Donald Trump was there. Oh, this guy is there. Okay, question number three. Discuss the opportunities and threats of implementing big data analytics. in improving engagement with its members oh opportunities and threats of implementing big data what's the advantage of big data deeper insight we know that deeper insight we can come up with customized products personalized marketing satisfying customers leading to more revenues more compact <laughs> what are the threats of big data data storage data security high initial investment technical expertise it expertise required okay got it discuss the benefits 
of using mobile technology. What can be the benefits of using mobile technology? Really easy, like mobile technology. Very good. Accessibility, that's the biggest advantage. It is always in my pocket. Fast, it's easy and fast. Notifications, communication, interaction. Okay. Very good. Are we done? Yeah. Where is question number four? No, there's one more. Evaluate the potential impact of the weaknesses which have been identified in the internal control activity. We need to talk about the weaknesses identified in the exhibit and recommend. So divide by four. Exhibit specific. Right, guys. What is the overall conclusion? What did you feel that Abhi, we looked at five, six papers in one go? How much it was dependent on technical knowledge and how much was very specific to exhibits? What do you think? Hello? A substantial portion was uh, was uh, common sense or very exhibit driven, and a smaller portion was knowledge based. So, so just focus on the top twenty five topics, which includes ten models and fifteen topics, and that's it. But you have to focus on professional marks that's extremely important you have to focus on all the formats extremely important and most importantly you have to focus on time management and all the exam techniques the biggest problem is time management and the biggest reason for time bad time management is time traps there are a few questions which are time trap, which will suck up your time and you will not realize after one, maybe after one hour is gone, then you will realize that you got sucked up into a wrong question. If you fall in the time trap, I will see you again next time. Okay, Rahim, be careful. Please make sure nobody can help you if you fall into a time trap. It's that serious. If you think you have potential to become a smart CFO, then you have to be smart and cunning. Smart and cunning. Okay. Don't be naive like an idiot student. Rahim, can you please stop? Please don't fall in the time trap. That's very, very important. Maybe it's question number one. Thank you, Rain. Question number one is generally a time trap or some idiot question will be a time trap. If it's a difficult question, somewhere in the middle, push it to the last. Okay. First, try to grab the easy marks. So at least question number one, you have to start. Do not, you know, you have to always start with question number one. After you're done with question number one, within the time, then you can move to the easier ones, NPVs and slides and uh, very specific questions. The main thing is do not get stuck. Always try to come out rather than getting stuck. That's the thing. Linking is very important. No general answer. 
search, find some basic information, link, and then you are done. Okay, but time management is very important. Do not panic if you don't know any topic. Always there is a one question in all the paper in which you might not know the topic, but it's okay. Do not panic. Okay, just apply some common sense, apply some, you know, cunningness to just come out of it instead of wasting more time, spend less time and come out of it. All this is if those, those four hours in your exam, those four hours in your exam is very important. This 150 hours which we spent is meaningless. Those four hours will decide, right? Yes, Ananya. Sir, like there are two more days and I have two questions, TT for you and Optima. Should I do both the questions on the CV platform? Or? No, TT for you don't try. You will, okay, let me let me speak. So now what to do in the next two days? Uh, Arsalan, this was, you are waiting for this since yesterday. Sunday and Monday, those are the two things, right? Do not overstudy. Time is gone. Uh, who's that unmuted person? Ananya, please mute. Time is, the time for preparation is gone. Okay. And we've just got 48 hours. So you just consolidate, revise, and relax. And first thing you should do tomorrow is revise the top 25 notes. Top 25 notes. That's correct. First thing is top 25 note. That will be your technical base. And um, after that, do one, do one question uh, tomorrow and do one more question on the next day. Okay, one question tomorrow on the CB, one question the next day. Yes, I know, I'm watching it. I have another screen on which I can see all the activities, yeah. Now, which question would you do tomorrow? Tomorrow you must do a time-based question eh? and then again on Monday you do one full four-hour time-based. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever question you will do, it has to be four-hour mock time-based. That's like a real exam. Otherwise, it's not, it's useless. Now, which question you will do, it's up to you. I would prefer a question which you have done previously, okay? Uh, maybe you can do one easy question first. Let's say tomorrow you can start with one easy question like COFOLD was easy, BCO was easy. And on Monday, you can do one average question. Stay away from the difficult one. You can do smartware, why not? So the the intention is that you just apply what we have learned, all these things today, yesterday. I just want you to apply that process. It's not about repeating the question. It's about repeating the techniques, which I'm more interested. I think that's a good idea. Uh, you can do one charity question, like either BCO or NCCP. I think NCCP we did yesterday. You can do BCO. And uh, one, you can do a commercial organization. Nebi, yeah, you can also do Nebi because there is um, uh, my thing available on Nebi as well, right? In the uh, webinar. Nebi answer, I don't know whether I have a Nebi answer. If I have a Nebi answer, uh, I will share. Otherwise, uh, let me check. BCO, Cofold, uh, Smartware, Dose, Highlight, NCCP, uh, Highlight, Highlight, Smartware, CC. No, I don't have Nebi's answer. If someone has Nebi's answer? Sir, I have it, sir. I can tell you. From where? Sir, 
from sir last time i was a student so can you share uh, on the group yeah sir i will yeah and then i will share on the other groups sure sir no is one there is no 15 minutes extra time <laughs> Technical articles, Abyss, I cover technical articles today. There are two technical articles. One is AI and one is four lines of defense. AI was tested probably in March in the morning batch. So the technical, both these technical articles are old ones. There is no new technical article. So chill, no worries. Crypto, forget about crypto. Crypto is one year old article. Raheem, just Google uh, SBL, ACCA, SBL technical article. Just Google and you will, ACCA will show you the thing. What's dope? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Ananya, you want to speak? Siri? No, sir. Lower your hand, Siri. Sir, I would like to thank you <laughs> for, on behalf of everybody, I would like to thank you for, you know, spending time with us. Uh, my thank you would be that you guys all pass. Then that would be a thank you. Otherwise, it's work in progress. Inshallah. Okay. Yeah, yes, definitely. Uh, Deepa? Hi, sir. Um, sir, actually, I have only tomorrow to study. So, any last tip for tomorrow only? Because I know you want us to. Chill. I'm really, really I'm... tired of writing four hours. I can't do then this just anymore. Chill. Then just chill. You see, last, we, I just showed you we did like five papers tonight. 70% is common sense exhibit related, right? So, if you're tired, everything. Just chill, just revise the top 25 topic. Just look at these here questions, one in, you know, here and there. The last thing I want you is tired on the day of the paper. So just build your confidence, relax, and think like a CFO. That's, you walk into the hall like a CFO. That mindset is very important. Okay? So I'll try, sir. Hard work is not required. The time for hard work is gone. Yes. Now is the time for smart work. Focused, little bit, relax. And yes, chamomile tea. Hmm? Yeah. Was uh, Hafiza? Thank you, sir. Is it is it Hafiza or Hafiza? Hafiza. Okay. Nice. It's a bit like saying Hafiz, but then put an A at the end. Um, I've got a question. ACC I released. Um, you may mark. Um, it's called Yumi. Do you recommend we do that? No. For two reasons. A, it is one. It is from one of the kits. It's a very easy question. And uh, it is a little bit weird. So no need. It's too late for it. Thank you. Farzana? Uh, so I just wanted to ask you, uh, what about the not... Uh, since you have a list of... Uh, uh, criteria for each of the topics. I just wanted to ask, have you considered or do you have any criteria for the non-financial performance because it's examinable? Non-financial performance will be straightforward from the case. Yes, that is, but you know, some general generic one which I can just think of. Uh, revenue per employee, mm -hmm. that's the best one. Okay. Yeah. Revenue you. divided by employee, that's the best non-financial. Oh, all right. Peter? Yes, sir, you can hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, sorry, I will ask a silly question, but I think it's too important uh, because this is the only time that I can ask that question. Can you just re repeat the, the point of uh, copying and pasting in the live exam? Because then I have to ask this question because we're about to write. So I want to know, uh, I open a, you know, a, a paper how do I copy, where do I go to say copying and pasting with the exhibits that you'll be talking about? So you want to understand the functionality of the copy pasting? Correct, sir. Okay, so copy pasting is uh, what I can suggest is, I, I don't have my 
I think my CBE is off. Yeah. Um, copy is very simple. You can either, you know, when you select a paragraph you want to copy, you can either, I would say you can press Control C. That's one option. Control C. Or you can right click and select copy. Or, uh, you know, these are the two options, I think. But when you paste, that at that time the CB becomes crazy and weird. So the safest option of pasting is where you go on your Word document and on the top you will see an icon for pasting on the Word document. On the top of few icons are there. There's one icon which says, you know, paste. So when you paste, you press that icon to paste. Okay. Is that all right, Peter? Okay, that's fine. Okay. All right. Okay. What date to use? You know, it's a, it's a petty thing. I would always use the date of the exam. Vidhi. Um, hi, sir. Firstly, thank you so much for today's lecture. It was really great. No, Banu, no. Yes, go on, Vidhi. So thank you for today's lecture. It was the best revision lecture. Um, so I have I have a small thing. Um, difference between a product diversification and an industry diversification. So in that, I am confused what to mention under both of them. Uh, like if when I simple. link it with the exhibit. Yeah. Very simple. Product diversification means that if you have one product, like if I'm teaching SBL, uh -huh. That's one product, right? Yes. I add one more product. I start AAA. After AAA, I add AFM, APM. That's product. I'm diversifying my products, but in the same industry. Okay. Industry diversification is I'm supposing if ACCA dies tomorrow, I'm screwed, right? Yes. I, I've put all my eggs in ACCA. So industry diversification would be, I might start teaching some subjects to SIMA or chartered accountants or MBAs or doctors. I don't know. That's industry diversification. Okay. Um, so just uh, one clarification. If, if uh, a SIM product has been um, changed, it's packaging and a little bit of use, uh, will it be called product diversification? Come again a product which can be used in a different way and the packaging is changed. Will it be okay. called product diversification? Yeah, right? that's, it's subjective. It can be product diversification. It can. It's also sometimes in real world known as product extension. Okay. But Thank it's, you, sir. It's, you know, it's, it's too complicated for the paper. Nothing like that will come. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Who has Ruchika? Tomorrow. Hello, tomorrow. Hello. Okay. Tomorrow Sunday I'm free. So I have like your paper, I have Arsalan paper and two more guys, extra mock. So I will check tomorrow. Ananya? Sir, I have a general question. Can I ask? Sir, do you give career guidance also? I mean, uh, sorry. Uh, Come again? Career guidance. Career guidance? Huh. When? I mean, like on a one-to-one -one basis or something like that. Uh, we can talk about it once you clear your paper. Why not? Sure, sir. Yeah. Okay. It will cost you a nice candlelight dinner. <laughs> yeah, sir. Okay, done. I'll be an affiliate if I pass this field. Inshallah. Good. All right, guys. Uh, so let's wind up tonight. Uh, I'm accessible tomorrow. Okay. Just relax, okay? Do not overstudy. Time of hard working is gone. Time for smart working is started. Top 25 topics. Try to do one or two mocks, the easier ones, just to repeat the process, okay? If not, then just go to a spa, relax. Chamomile tea, uh, it's really good, yeah? And um, I might not see you again, all of you. 
but I'm accessible tomorrow on WhatsApp. And of course, after the paper, let me know uh, what are the topics. And then on the result day, we will communicate again. So I wish you all of you ex all the very best. And one suggestion, whatever um, religion you belong to, uh, it's very important that prayers, prayers are very important. Okay, efforts plus prayers. So do pray, do pray before you go. Ask your parents to pray. Of course, we all will pray. So all this put together, inshallah, you guys will pass and uh, all the best. Okay. Bye-bye. Good night.